is Pan-Africanism. Since my objective is Pan-Africanism, I'm a Pan-Africanist. Africa is my base. Africa is my priority. The Black Panther Party was a Marxist-Leninist party. Its priority was the conversion of America through revolutionary means into a socialist society. You understand? Now, I want socialism in America. Yeah, excuse me, if we had it, then we'd be able to see a whole lot of things that we need to see about on the question of racism. And I know, I know, theoretically, that socialism in America will help black people. So I'm for socialism in America. I'm pushing it. But it's not my priority. It's not my priority. It's the priority of the Panther Party. It's not my priority. My priority is Africa. <laughs> because while socialism is good, <laughs> my black brothers are a lot better. And I know my black brothers will fight for me quicker than international socialism. Mm -hmm. yeah. One question. <coughs> some do and some don't. Some do and some don't. But uh, look here, brother. Just because they live on the continent don't mean that they're authorities on Africa. Marcus Garvey ain't never stepped foot on Africa. He never stepped foot on Africa. And what he did for Africa, a whole lot of brothers living on the continent never did. So just because a brother from the continent and even engaged in armed struggle don't mean he know everything. Let's, let's look at it objectively. Brother, what you talking about? How you want to get there? Is it the best way? Listen to my way. That's all. Okay. Hey, look, that's a very difficult problem, you understand? And uh, again, you got to watch the control of the media. Now, Mr. Obote is the legitimate president of Uganda, correct? He is. A man comes along by the name of Amin and knocks this man over by guns by guns, through a military coup d'etat. Thus, he has illegally usurped power, all right? He has illegally usurped power. What we have to do is to see whether or not his illegal usurpation of power is really sanctioned by the masses or not. You understand? Because that's how you justify regimes. That's the only way you justify them. Because if it is not sanctioned by the masses, then people know that it ain't going right. And so what the white boy does is he does everything to make you believe it is sanctioned by the masses. He even makes the masses believe that they sanction it. You understand? And if he can't do that, at least he's going to silence the masses and say it's sanctioned. So when this occurs, this is always the first problem we have. Do the masses sanction this? That's the only question. Now, when that question is beginning to boil, the white boy is going to bring out other things and try to focus your attention on those things. You understand? I mean, illegally usurped power from Milton Obote. When he did that, it looked as if he did it with, in complicity with Israel, Israeli agents. I think Obote even charged that he did. So I mean, got rid of the Israelis. Super revolutionary act. Very super, because the masses of African people the world over are opposed to the illegal occupation of Israel. We are just people. We know the land belongs to the Palestinians. We have no alternative but to support that just struggle. Aside from that, they're fighting with Egypt. Egypt is our motherland. Egypt is Africa. You can't play with that. You can't come and give me some dollars to support you here and try to chunk away at my homeland. You must be, I ain't no chump. I got to be against you because you're a threat to me. So he kicks them out, man, and wow, everybody said, hey, man, this dude is revolutionary. He got rid of the Zionist. He's together, right on. Then he had problems with the British, and he told them off. But there are contradictions building up in the society. He's got to solve them. Because once you usurp power, you're telling the people, I can do it better than the one who did it before. <clears throat> and you better deliver quick, fast, and hurry. 
Quick, fast, and hurry. Here comes the Asian problem. Right on. The Asians occupy commercial interests all over our, all over our communities, all over, all over, all over. Not only in uh, West Africa, in the West Indies. Yes, they do. They occupy a class of entrepreneurs, small businessmen, petty commerce. We have to buy from them. We are the Africans. We have to buy from them. But the Asians were brought into Africa by Europeans, white imperialism. It is they who brought the Asians into Africa while they were taking us out of Africa. And they brought them here to create this race class. They did. They did. Because they knew when the conflict was coming, we would rush to them and fight them before we got to them. So any intelligent person would first try to make allies with these people, since they're in fact your potential allies, and go after European imperialism. White boy, he think he's smart. We got him covered. So when the fight comes to bring back Mr. Obote, everybody be talking about the Asians. <laughs> everybody talking about the Asians. They just can't. There are ways to, to do that. There are ways. There are ways. When I was in Algeria, <coughs> I met many of the uh, people who were leaders of the um, FLN, who fought in the revolution. And I was very surprised to know that most of them had fought for the French in Vietnam and had been captured by the Vietnamese. They were captured by the Vietnamese. And the Vietnamese educated them and sent them back to Algeria. <laughs> and I have never forgotten that. I have never forgotten that. And I've always thought that is one, that is a superb example of true humanity. A superb example of true humanity. We should send them home educated. We owe that to the world. Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam has served the world correctly. With the prisoners that it had, it sent them back to Algeria, and they started the armed struggle against the French. They have served the world. Thus we have to serve, help serve the world socialist revolution. We should educate them, send them back. They got to fight over there. They got to fight, because the whole world is going to be on fire, that's for sure. <laughs> the whole world is going to be on fire. They got to fight over there, too, so we should educate them. We should render a service to humanity, to the world socialist movement. I can't hear you. You mean the ruling circles, don't you? You mean the ruling circles. The students and the workers are doing a good job of that. Mm -hmm. And China, sure enough, they've been looking at China, and Mao whooped them once before. <laughs> and he was a whole lot weaker. <laughs> he sure enough whooped them once before when he was a whole lot weaker. <laughs> The ruling circles, the ruling circles. But the contradictions are coming. Even within their system, it's coming. It's coming. China's relation to America. Well, you have to understand that. There's, obviously, it seems to me that uh, there's going to be a fight somewhere. I mean, between China and Russia, China and America, somewhere there's got to be a fight. I mean, you know, there's got to be a fight. So like, uh, America and Russia, you know, is very interesting, because you can't isolate them, understand? America is in what is known as NATO. Huh? NATO. NATO is the combined military strength of all the Western imperialist countries. Uh, America, France, Britain, Germany, Italy, Spain, Greece, etc., etc. They all come together. And they integrate their, mili their armies, their navies, their air forces. So they have like, you know, could you imagine what that's like, man? That's NATO. That's NATO, man. You understand that? that and they, at any given time, man, they can control. Woo, Lord. That's frightening to think about, yeah. Well, Russia and the Eastern Socialist countries have what is known as the Warsaw Pact. Uh-huh. Now, the Warsaw Pact, 
is the same thing that NATO is. You have Czechoslovakia, Poland, Russia, all the Soviet Socialist Republics in this. So that's a, that's a jack. You know what you're talking about now. They're mighty powerful too. Now, NATO is imperialistic. Imperialistic. Warsaw Pact is socialist. They say they are. They say they are. They say they are. And these two groups, these two countries, in terms of sets of countries, who have dialectically opposed philosophies are talking about coming together militarily. When they talk about European security, when they talk about European security, that's what they're talking about. That's all they're talking about. You hear him all the time talking about European security? That's what they're talking about. Now, it is very important for us, Africans and socialists, to understand how is it possible for a socialist system and an imperialist system to put their military might together? And if so, against what? Against what? Now, we have to examine that. They're talking about European security. Nobody's against European security. Europe should be secured. Everybody's been green. I'm for African security. I'm for Asian security. I'm for European security. It's a necessity. But this European security is not Europe geographically. Do you understand me? <laughs> you understand me clearly? You hear me? It's not Europe geographically. Because America ain't in Europe. You hear me? <laughs> Canada ain't in Europe. You hear me? Australia ain't in Europe. You hear me? Iceland ain't in Europe, you hear me? They talking about white man security. <laughs> <laughs> hear me well. Hear me well. They talking about white man security. They talking about white man security. Irregardless of ideology. I'm coming, I'm coming. We're still talking about China. Still talking about China, brother. But we got to analyze before we go, right? China is socialist. Thus, it seems to me that China and Russia would better put their military might together against America than Russia and America put their military might together against China. It seems logical. It seems logical. And it's very Marxist. It is quite Marxist. It is orthodox Marxism. Orthodox. But America and Russia are going together, understand? Now, in NATO, they have a clause that says an attack against one is an attack against all. You hear me? You hear me? <coughs> you hear me well? <laughs> now, it seems to me that if they come together, they're going to say an attack against one is an attack against all. You hear me well? And it is inevitable that contradictions between Russia and China will develop. Inevitable. Thus, an attack by China against them will be an attack against them. So Nixon, he think he's slick. He swear he's slick. <laughs> <laughs> he swear he's slick. He gonna send Kissinger to ask for an invitation. You hear me? He gonna ask for an invitation. Well, look here, man. If somebody asks for an invitation in your house, you can't slam the door in their face if they want to talk. You at least got to be willing to talk to them, even if you're fighting them, like the Vietnamese are doing with them. They sit and talking to them in Paris, but they whooping them in Vietnam every day. But they be talking in Paris. So the man want to talk, oh, sure. Want to come to my house? You're welcome to, come. Then Nixon makes it a fair, like if he's invited, understand? 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 And Nixon shows up, you understand? But there's something else going on. Nixon is going to Russia after he goes to China, you understand? Hear me well. And he gives a whole lot of publicity to China <laughs> and very little to Russia. Hear me well. Hear me well. In China, ain't nothing come out of it. You read what came out, the, uh, what do you call, after the end of the visits when they issued these statements. Right. <laughs> they were completely opposed, completely opposed after the visit, completely opposed. The Chinese supported North Vietnamese. 
The Americans supported the South Vietnamese. The Chinese supported the North Koreans. The Americans supported the South Koreans. Everything was completely opposed. Everything, everything, everything. Everything. Question of Taiwan. Well, oh, yes. Well, the trip to China, of course, had to do with Taiwan. But the Chinese had won. They had won the political victory. Mao Zedong said that he wasn't going to shed another drop of Chinese blood, but he was going to unite Taiwan. He said that. Because China could have taken Taiwan any time they wanted. They could have. But he said, we're not going to shed another drop of Chinese blood because too much has already been shed because of foreign ideologies. <laughs> Dig it. <coughs> foreign, that's another word we must remember. They're very descriptive, these words. Foreign ideologies. So he just united it. But they had already lost. America had lost. He had lost. Amer Nixon leaves China, all his publicity goes to Russia. And he signs six agreements in Russia. Six. And just signed another one yesterday. I think by now he done signed about 11. <laughs> done signed about 11. 11. And with China, all he's doing is bringing doctors. The Chinese, right on, we're going to do that. Send some doctors too. Because what America wants to do is to give the impression that China is the one who's going to start the war. Even after they went and they tried peace. That's what they're going to try and do. That's all. That's all it's about. Ain't nothing else. He see it coming, we see it coming. My brother. Okay, we can do that later. Yeah, we can talk about the tactics later, bro. Huh? We can talk about the tactics later. Tactics. We can talk about tactics later. All right. can make them captive because we have the political power to make them captive in a very friendly way. Are you saying it's a system we're different? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And that's the most important thing. See, because everybody says, yeah, everybody's been getting the African, the Asians been getting, yeah, but the white man created the problem. Because now why are you going to go to Asia and get Asians and bring them in and put them in this class? Why are you going to do it? Because he knows inevitably there's going to be conflict. And he's going to be out. There are enough Africans there. You dig it? He's pulling us out of Africa and going to Asia and bring somebody else. And you just come and fall right into his trap. Brother, every time I think I come to that, I've been having problems. So me, I just leave the facts and let people come to their own assumptions. Right. But as long as the facts are there, you know, there's only one assumption to which one can come. But there's another assumption. One can come to the uh, assumption that maybe uh, Russia is not really socialist, or maybe America is not really capitalist. Yeah, that's an alternative, too. So it could be that they are both in fact, socialist systems, or they're both, in fact, imperialist systems. Well, one is not genuine the other, and there's a, a possibility of pulling it. For example, Russia might think is a possibility of pulling America into the social, NATO into the socialist camp. And NATO might think there's a possibility of pulling um, Russia into the imperialist camp. And so each of them may think they're genuine. Russia may think it's genuinely socialist. America will think it's genuinely capitalist. And so we just.
Socialist imperialist. That's what the Chinese call the Russians. A socialist imperialist is an imperialist who is very social with you. That's what they say. <laughs> In that sense, that the Chinese mean it, yes. The Chinese are serious. The Chinese call the Russians a lot of names. And the Chinese, when they label you, man, when they label you, they really label you. They don't play. Running dog, lackey. Man. You hear Radio Peaky, man, you go crazy. They're really going through, you know? And so when they say the man's a socialist imperialist, they tell you, man, he's an imperialist who is robbing you but doing it very socially. Yes, sir. Huh? The Arab countries, that's, see, that's another area of conflict. Very good, very good. Excellent, my brother, excellent. See, uh, these folks gonna sit down to meet NATO and, NATO and Warsaw. They're gonna have their European security meeting, you understand? But now, when they sit down, it's gonna be a question of power, you understand? Like NATO's gonna say, well, we control uh, this area of the world. And uh, Warsaw Pact gotta be able to say, well, we control the Arabs, or we control these, or you know. It's just power play, you understand? Power play. And now there's been a lot of confusion because the Chinese have been accusing the Russians of delaying the Arabs from fighting and waging a just struggle. You understand what the Chinese are saying? The Chinese are saying that the Arabs got to fight. And once they start fighting, they're going to win. And the Chinese are saying the Russians are stopping the Arabs from fighting. And they say the way the Russians are stopping them is by confusing the Arabs. And they, say, they further say that the Russians are in cahoots with the Jews. Yes, that's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. And I'm not going to tell you what I think, but I'll tell you to check them out. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. That brings us then to the problem of race. Problem of race. That's a difficult problem, difficult problem. Because it's very hard, very hard for some people to understand racism, very hard. But there's one thing we know about it. Once you are the victim of it, racism, you know what it is. You know what it is. And sometimes this seems to have no rational basis. <coughs> so irrational. So irrational. Especially when it is explained time and time again. Even when racist imperialism, the white man, the white man, Racist imperialism is operating, and people are pointing out the contradictions. It still continues. It still continues. It still continues. And it unleashes. Man, look here. Racism, when it's unleashed, man, really. You all got to see it, man. You all really, really all got to see it, man. Like when I was young, man, and I was in SNCC, you know, a long time ago, and we'd be jiving around with them city movement, man. You got to see it, man. Man, they'd go crazy. I, you'd sit unbelievable, man. You'd just sit on a stool, man, and they would go crazy, insane, man. Insane, you just look at them, man, they're crazy. One person can make them act this way. Five kids can tie up a whole city. <laughs> Kids. And he didn't know what we were doing to him. Five kids can tie up a whole city. It's unbelievable, man. You can't really understand it. You know, that's on one level, man. And then you get on another level, man, with the liberals. Hey, man. And they're even colder than these cats. I mean, they're colder than these cats. And then you try through every, every, every class structure, every level of their society. 
And from top to bottom, from bottom to top, it reeks with racism. Yeah. It reeks with racism. Yeah. There isn't the slightest gap. Not the slightest gap. On the question of race, there is no contradiction. For white people, on the question of race, there are no contradictions. There are contradictions on capitalism. But on race, they are a unified, monolithic structure. <laughs> it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. On the question of race, white society is a unified, monolithic structure. On capitalism, there are divisions. Not only, not, there are real divisions, even if they don't see it. But on race, hey man, it's hard. Really, only divisions are the ethnic divisions, like the Greeks against the Italians or something like that. But on the question of whites, unified. 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 Some people say that capitalism gave birth to racism. Some people say racism gave birth to capitalism. I was saying two days ago, innate racism. But some people have corrected me, and they are right. I'm incorrect. It's not innate racism. I, we can't say that Whitey has innate racism, because we have to allow for change. Because one thing we know about life is that change is permanent. We have to allow for change. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible of change, but we know that. All change is possible. All change is possible. All change. All change. It's possible. We have to allow for it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But while we're allowing for it, <laughs> we got to prepare in case it don't. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> we're allowing for it. We're going to allow for it. You understand? But we're going to prepare for it in case it don't change. You understand? Because we'd be fooled if we don't. And we have to prepare for it because historically, nobody can deny that we must prepare for it. We what? must prepare for it because everywhere, the white man, European culture has come in contact with African culture. There has been constant, constant and unceasing conflict. Constant and unceasing conflict. Whenever European culture meets African culture, in Africa, when he came, conflict, constant, unceasing. On the ships while he was bringing us here, constant, unceasing. In the West Indies, rebellions, 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 constant, unceasing, unceasing. In Brazil, constant, unceasing. In Harlem, constant, unceasing. In South Carolina, constant, unceasing. Unceasing conflict. Constant and unceasing conflict. Every time. Yes, my brother. tactical. That's tactical. I'd rather stick with principles. Because if you stick with principles, you can debate on tactics. I think many people always get trouble is today. We are trying to get caught up in tactics rather than principles. So then let's do principles, then we can deal with tactics later. My sister. What role does religion play in a true revolutionary movement? A true revolutionary movement is scientific. Religion is unscientific. It's true. Can you disagree with me? Is religion scientific? It's unscientific. It's what the French call mystification. Ah, but it is here. It is here. It is a reality. So we must get the positive. It's like superfly. It's here, so we got to deal with it. We're not strong enough to put it out, so we take the positive.
Of course. But the science will do that. The science will do that. The science will do that. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, no. No, listen. It is a fact that in a true revolutionary movement, religion is unscientific. We understand that. But we have a lot of people who are thoroughly imbued with religion. And for us to come before them and say to them, hey, man, you know, that's nonsense, it just causes conflict amongst us. And at this point, we want to minimize our conflict. So we take the positive from the religion and walk right through the church with it. SNCC organized from church, you know. SNCC organized from church. Well, you should see some preachers from SNCC. I mean, young boys. I'll preach to ministers and take his, I'll take his whole audience from him. What you mean? Get up there and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I read the Bible. Yes, sir, I know it. Glad to be here. A well, joyful noise they said unto me when they said that it's going to the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be here. I'm, yes, sir. I'm from New York, but I go to church every Sunday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I thank my mother and father for sending me to church. Yes, because they taught me something. They taught me the Bible, and the Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's right. That's right. Thou shalt bow down before no other man before me. That's what the Bible says. And if you bow down before the white man, you're unchristian. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know the Bible. I know the Bible. I know the Bible well. Jesus said, I've come to bring the sword, not the shield. That's what he said. Jesus said, it's in your Bible. Yes. And that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm doing the Lord's work. Yes. We can take the positive and move with it. Because we know we're, gonna, we're not going to need it. Let's just take the positive. They're negatives. The negatives is they sit in the church. They become fatalistic. The negative outweighs the positive, but we must collect the positive. Mm. Oh, well, let's get Islam first, since we're with religion. It's non-scientific. Anything is non-scientific, me personally, I got no use for it. On what? On Islam? I can say it's non-scientific very easily. Its origins is non-scientific. The prophet said that he saw Allah, and this is what Allah told the prophets. Dig it? Now me, I didn't see Allah. So I don't know what Allah told the prophets. And I want, I want to know why Allah picked the prophets. You understand? To write all these things down. And the prophet, he got so much zeal when Allah, who is just, told him this, that he went out and killed everybody else who didn't accept what Allah told him. You understand? And he even left Saudi Arabia and came into my country. You understand that? Came into my country. And did that, man. It's unscientific. scientific. Yes, my brother. I have observed it in action. I have not observed its theory. But its practice, I know. It is very fatalistic. Well, now, are the Muslims orthodox Muslims? Hmm? I'm traveling on the boat. Uh, well, Orthodox Muslims. Well, I've studied very carefully Orthodox Muslims in Guinea. But I haven't studied very. Huh? I haven't very carefully studied the Nation of Islam. I have not very stu carefully studied it. It's doing some good things in the community. And the positive aspects seem to outweigh the negative aspects. And we must always be careful that that continues. Because we know in everything there's positive and negative. But the negative would always be insignificant. <laughs> oh, Lin Piao, right, I'm sorry. OK. On Lin Piao <laughs> and Mao, hey, listen, y'all. Let's see. Me? <laughs> this blew my mind. You hear me? 
I mean, I'm young. I ain't been around. I ain't been nowhere, really. You know. But I see dudes, man, who I, we played marbles together, man, stabbed me in the back, you understand? I don't know about me, I keep getting up. But I figured there comes a time, you know, if you live long enough, <laughs> that that stuff stops. <laughs> I was in Guinea. I saw what people who work with Seco Touré for 25 years, man. What they, for 25 years, man. They were sitting with the cat eating dinner and plotting against him. You know what I'm talking about? Taking money from the white man to kill him for 25 years, man. You hear me? I said, wow, that's pretty deep, man. I said, well, after a while, maybe we clean it up. And then I heard on the radio about it in Seattle, man. And it was the Russians who released it, you understand? I said, oh, man, they jacked it. They're just trying to cause divisions. And America picked it up. I said, oh, I know these white people, man. They're just trying to cause divisions. And the Chinese admitted it, man. I said, wow, hey, man, how, you know? There are always contradictions. Hard to say, brother, because uh, information that I received, the Chinese said that uh, the man tried to commit uh, uh, assassination against uh, Chairman Mao Zedong. And uh, he didn't make it, but that he took a plane with his whole family and, you know, people, and was flying, and the plane blew up over uh, Mongolia. And uh, he died there. And uh, the Russians said that uh, they went to Mongolia, and they dug up all the bodies, and they ain't find in Piao. And they said, matter of fact, everybody on the plane was under 33. You know, so that's where it's hanging. You know. So you just have to try and figure out what's happening. Well, it could have been a develop could have been a development from the Cultural Revolution. Could have been a development from the Cultural Revolution. But the Chinese did say that uh, Lin Piao was heading to Russia when his plane crashed. I forgot to mention that. So, at least they were letting us know that hey, man, it's still on. <laughs> In case you all forgot, it's still on. He was on his way to Russia. <laughs> So whether he was or he wasn't, they said it, and they must have said it for a reason. If he wasn't, if he was, if he wasn't. <laughs> so they just want you to know it's still on. All right. That's also part of the philosophy. Now, uh, the other thing we got to understand very carefully. Africa, she's one. She's one, and she belongs to Africans. She belongs to us. She's our mother, you understand? Now she's rich, she's nice, a lot of people try to get her. A lot of people try to get her. They try, they try. They can dominate, but they can never conquer. They can, says Sekoutere, dominate, but never conquer. They can never conquer Africa, it's not possible. But they try, they try. And the Arabs, under the guise of Islam, did it. They came. But we, man, look here, we're just people. You know what I'm we're very just. And we said, if y'all here, man, <laughs> you know, if y'all want to be Africans, y'all can be. We say that. That's actually what we say. We actually say that, man. If y'all want to be Africans, y'all can be. You know, because we know what y'all did, but that's all in the past. You know, we can't forget it, but we can sure forgive it. I mean, you know, we can forgive, we can't forget. We say, you can stay, you know. So now if they do that, they'll stay, you know. But really, ain't no problem. <laughs> ain't no problem. Because you see, uh, they got some people over here called Jews, man. Okay. And they're going to be fighting all the Arabs. They're going to be fighting them all. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be fighting for Egypt, which is in Africa. So the Arabs, they will be protecting the northern tip of our continent. Oh, well, it's not all the same. I mean, you can document it. Everybody knows it's the same. I don't have all the facts in my hand, but I read pamphlets all the time. Anybody can get one. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same because the Zionist control of South Africa is total. 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 No, there's scientific socialism. It's practiced in Africa.
Mm. Well, because if you put down the principles of socialism, you'll find the principles are the same. Because they're universal and abiding. Marx and Engels did not, did not discover socialism. They didn't discover it. They merely observed and recorded. That's all. That's all. It's like Newton. It says if, you, if a body's in motion, he tends to stay in motion unless stopped by an outside force. Newton didn't invent that. He just observed it and recorded it. Right? And what he observed and recorded was a universal truth. Now, because the Europeans have been writing for a long time, right. it appears that he calls it Newton's law. Right. Same thing with Marx and Engels. It's called Marxism and Leninism, but it's universal. They observed it, and they recorded it, and scientifically compiled it. We thank them for that, and that only. That and that only. But Osagifo says in his philosophical, classical work, Conscientism, if one seeks the roots, the roots of Marxism, Leninism, one must go to communalism. The roots are to be found in the African traditional society. Anybody got a copy of Conscientism? No. Well, Sajifo says that if one seeks the, poli the political ancestors or roots? I think it's roots. Roots or ancestors? I'm not sure. Ancestors? The political ancestors of Marxism, Leninism, one must go to communalism, which means that communalism is the ancestor of socialism. Thus, communalism in Africa, I mean socialism in Africa, which develops from communalism in Africa, is airtight socialism. But it's still scientific. It's universal and abiding. But it's, so it's socialism in Africa with its own peculiarities. I'm not sure because he says if you want the ancestors of it, you got to go to communalism. So he sends you to communalism. But he says it's scientific. If it is scientific, it is, is it not universal truth? If it is scientific, is it not universal truth? Yes. Yes. Study, uh, have you ever seen a book entitled The Mind of Africa yeah. and uh, Conscientism? Yeah. Well, I think that if you looked at those two, you'd see clearly.
But uh, in the sense that with these models, the first models, they didn't even come to the heaviest contradiction in the world at that time, which was the colonization of Africa and the slavery of black people. They mentioned it. There's no disagreement with that. There's no disagreement with that. But the universality of their concept that the means of production must be owned and controlled by the masses, is that universal and abiding? That's why I said incrumism. That's why I said incrumism. That's why I said incrumism, because this is universal truth. That's why I said it. I'm here. I can't hear you, I'm so sorry. Well, they're just confused. They're, they're trying to be internationalist before they're nationalist, but you can't be an internationalist before you have a nation, obviously. And your contribution to world socialism, as a matter of fact, is much better if you secure socialism in your nation. But you're also supposed at the same time to carry on the struggle for international socialism. And the Vietnamese demonstrate that. Because while they fight the white boy, they send doctors to Guinea. You hear what I'm talking about? The Vietnamese have doctors in Guinea. And they fight in a war in Vietnam. There's my sister. straight enough? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. <clears throat> the basic of the problem, the conflict in terms of capitalism and imperialism is economic. That's the problem. The solution is economic. Understand me well. The prerequisite is political. The prerequisite to the solution is political. That is to say that before you can solve any problem your people face, you must, you must, you must start politically. You must start politically. You can't start economically. Now, a lot of people try and do that. They tell you we should be black businessmen. What we need, man, is look here, man. We got to have some money before we can do anything. No, brother. It's not money who creates man. It's man who creates money. Let me get the people. We'll make our money. We'll make our money. I hear you. When you get your plan politically, what are you doing?
Well, after you have a thorough understanding of it, you to study it. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Like pulling positives from negatives, I do those things all the time. All the time. Because theory without practice is empty, empty, empty. There's no discussion on this economics. Everybody agrees that you must first have political movement. You must understand now what you're agreeing with. You must understand what you're agreeing with. You're saying that anybody who comes to us pushing a program of economic development or economic this or money this before pushing a program of political education is going the wrong way. That's what you're saying. Are you sure you agree with that? Well, what you're also saying is that once we start getting together, there ain't going to be a lot of money. And we should not expect a lot of money. As a matter of fact, it's going to get worse. As a matter of fact, it's going to get worse. And what you're saying is that you're willing to put off economic satisfaction to meet your economic desires for the good of the political entity. That's what you're saying. Yeah. It's a framework of any society, any people who seek their liberation. Because you're going out to meet the need, meet your needs. You need a house. You need food. You need clothes, all right? And in this society, you need money, right? All right. So that's what you need. Now the question is, how's the best way to get it? How's the best way to get it? Not the fastest, but the best. Not the fastest, the best. Because the fastest ain't always the best. Now the fastest can look pretty. Mighty pretty. Mighty pretty. There's a difference between a war horse and a race horse. It's a big difference. A race horse, pretty. I mean pretty, just galloping away for a while. Passing everybody and look here. The people just be looking, looking, looking. Finish. They go wild. Then they wait, man, but uh, it's just a fast race. You know After that race, it ain't no more. So people always say, hey, remember? Yeah, he ran a fast race, man. He was only here for about 10 minutes, you know. It was fast, you know what I'm saying? A war horse keeps going. It's a handsome horse. It's an understood horse. It understands life. Confidently, it walks through. Constantly. And the only time he stops, is when he's finished. He don't finish before he stops. A racehorse finishes before he stops. But the war horse only finishes when he stops. When he stops, it's finished for him. You understand? So we don't want people rushing. We don't want them rushing. We don't want them galloping fast. We want them slow down, understanding that the war horse while he may take longer to get there, is the horse. Is the horse. We don't want him to rush. We don't want him to rush. We want to get the best way. And the best way is by your entire people coming together and deciding how many houses do we need? How many can we build this year? How can we expand later on? Rather than for you saying, I'm going to go out here and find, try and get me a house. build a fast house. Make no mistake about it. You may build a pretty house. But you'll be finished before you stop. You'll be finished all the way down. 
So before you get to this, you have to sit down and train yourself to understand this. That when we get to this, there will be no exploitation. There will be no opportunity for classes to arise so that our children will be fighting each other. Because after all, Otaji says on the, on the fly page of Conscientious, let me quote a letter. You know, man, there's a whole lot of confusion around Marxism-Leninism, you know, or Marxism. A lot of people feel that, uh, that Marxism is just about economics, only economics. But that's not it. That's not the most important thing in life. He said everybody knows the most important thing in life is recreation. And he's correct. The most important thing in life is recreation, how we recreate. If we weren't going to recreate any more children, there's no need for us to be here. We just go on and play it until it's over. So it's what comes after that's important. And if we are intelligent people, we cannot build a system that will lead to inevitable conflict. We can't do that. So that we have to slow this down. Man can't have a million dollar house. Just can't have it, sorry. Stealing is 10,000. You can work, you own 10,000 without exploiting your people. Every penny belongs to you. Every penny. See, a lot of people un misunderstand socialism. You know? And the white boy knows that. One time, you know, when I was living in DC, the white boy said I own a $70,000 house. Man. It was very funny, man. I own no house. You know, I know where Whitey was coming from. And I used to watch the reaction of your brothers, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they are, You own a $70,000 house, man. Hey, brother, did you ever give me a penny? Did you ever give me a penny? Did you ever see me exploit black people? It's like if I own a seventy thousand dollar house, as long as I work for it honestly, without exploiting anybody, it belongs to me. Isn't that just? That's what socialism is all about. If you work for it without exploiting anybody, honestly, it's yours. Yes. If we have fifty acres of land, I work twenty. You work fifty. You're gonna get a bigger harvest. I can't under socialism come and say, hey man, you're supposed to give me. Whoa, brother. If I work 50, you work 50. If I work 50, you work 50. Then we can share. But I can't work no 50 and you work no 20. Right on. And if you can't work 50, work to the fullest of your capacity. And if the fullest of your capacity is 30, I give you my 20. But work to the fullest of your capacity. If we do that, we can work. We can do it. Just work to the fullest of your capacity. Ain't gonna be no problem. Don't think so. None no conflict. The old man says. Sajipo says that there are class structures. There are class structures in Africa, right? But it says 97% of the people are peasants. Those of you who are always talking about going to Africa, you got to think what that means. Understand what it means? 97% of the people are peasants. That means ain't many cities. And when they say peasants, they mean peasants. Mud hut peasants, 97%. But if you love it, you know what it's going to do. You're going to work with it. So that means about 3% out there. Now, these 3%, they are no hard, fast capitalists. You understand? Most of these are government workers, ministers, mem cabinet ministers, you know, uh, big clerks. They are the ones who make up this 3%. Then you have the politicians. Then you have uh, people who are agents for European industrial firms. They also come, you understand, under this bracket. Now, what Nkrumah says is that these people who form this class structure is, in fact, imitating the mannerisms of a race, of a race rather than of a class. 
And he says that because he says, these Africans imitate the white boy who they come in contact with on the continent. Understand? But the white boy who came to the continent as a governor general or as a sergeant with the army is from the lower, lower, lower class of Europe. Understand? And so when this white boy comes, he has certain mannerisms. And the brother adopts this mannerism. And he thinks he's adop adopting the mannerism of a class that's above him. <laughs> <laughs> so he says it's only a race. And Sekou Touré says there's no class structure in Africa in that sense. There's only revolutionary and counter-revolutionary. Those who are truly African, and he repeats all the time, those who keep true to African dignity and Africa culture, and those who do not. Same division, is it not? Same division. Everybody agrees on politics, because this is very important. Very important, because a lot of people in our community who are talking about economic development. And you have to understand very carefully if you say that that's not the way, then you have to understand you're talking about political way. But my brother. All interactions of uh, people on a social level. The interrelationships of those uh, reactions. Because culture is anything man made. Culture is anything man made. Politics is the interrelationships and the those principles which govern the interrelationships of human beings on all levels. See, but you have to get politics before you get economics. Because uh, no country had economic independence before it had political independence. No country. You can't name me one country that said we have economic independence. All of them must go through political independence. You can't nationalize a bank if you don't have no political power. There's my brother. How can you say that the uh, Islam that uh, Malcolm X has is not scientific? <laughs> well, that's the Islam I can say the Islam brother Malcolm had was not scientific. How can you say that? Because he himself said so. He said that when you come to talk about religion, let's put that in the corner. Then it got nothing to do yes, with sir. the scientific problem we're dealing with. Whether you're Baptist, Methodist, or whatever, he still gets you because of something else. Let's deal with this other thing else. Put that one in the closet. He was you it's not scientific, man. That's all he was saying. It ain't got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. This is science. If you got that contradiction, keep that contradiction in the closet. But let's work with this. Well, I've discussed the principles of scientific socialism. And uh, I think it's abiding. And I've explained clearly that its roots comes from communalism. Now, if there's someone who knows Ujama, then maybe they should explain Ujama. We could see what that is. I don't claim to know Ujama, my brother. My question is, brother was talking about Islam. What you're saying is that regardless of what your religion is, that you should always keep that within yourself. Also work towards the struggle. Correct. The people, right? Yes, and as you work towards it, your religion will become less, because you don't even need your religion when you start fighting. He's already told you that. Right, right. You understand? I think that we have to examine Brother Malcolm carefully. See, we really don't do that. Brother Malcolm was a pimp. He was the lowest of the lowest. You understand that, brother? He was the lowest of the lowest. In order for him, he had to go through a change. A change. <laughs> I mean, a sure enough change from a man who's selling a woman to a man who fights killed to protect her. That's a sure enough change. And he couldn't make that change no way because there was nothing out there for him except Islam. That's what, that's what gave him the change. He used Islam to bring about that change because he had to go through a spiritual change. Completely diametrically, he had nothing out there to hold on to except Islam. That's all he held on to. That's all he used it for. He didn't have it. Today, we can give our people something else. So when they go through that change, they won't have to come through the other changes he had to go through after going through that change. 
He had to go through a change, man. You know what it is to come from a pimp to somebody who would want to shoot other pimps even? Well, he wouldn't want to shoot them because he'd understand that and try to change them. But from somebody who wants to protect the sister? Hey, man, that's showing sure enough change. That's coming from process. That's coming from zoot suits to guns. Touch you, I'll kill you. And before, I'm just selling you too. That's showing enough change. See, many people out here who've been to prison come out and talk Malcolm, but they ain't gone through no change. The only thing changed about them is their rhetoric. That's all the change. They ain't changed. They ain't changed, but theory without practice is empty, and they're coming up empty. And empty barrels make the most noise. OK, let me get the brother. How do you, uh, what, what is the, uh, the main difference between uh, inter intercommunalism and, uh, and communism? I've never understood intercommunalism, brother. I read it one time on the Panther paper. I've never understood what intercommunalism is. I still don't. And nobody's ever explained it. I tried to read, but I never saw it. I don't know if you know. Maybe you can help me. Well, I don't know what that well expounds on it, but it sounds very similar to, uh, uh, to what you were speaking of as far as the worldwide socialist movement. A worldwide? A worldwide socialist. Uh, yes, there's a worldwide socialist movement. There are socialist tendencies in Asia. Correct? There are worldwide socialist tendencies in Africa, correct? So at least these two make up a world socialist movement. But there is an African revolution. And there is a Chinese revolution. And the, the best way I can serve the African revolution is to bring about, Af bring the African revolution to socialism as quickly as possible, the best way. Understand? While doing that, if I can help, and will continue to help the Chinese, if not materially, morally. If not materially, morally. They always have my moral support. And I mean, sure enough, moral support. I mean, sure enough, because theirs is a just struggle. Understand? And we are just people, so we got to support it. It's like the Arabs, man. It's a just struggle. We got to support it. It's a just struggle. So they at least have our moral support. Yeah, it's just one thing. Talking about practical, you know, we here. We got to be able to, you know, bring ourselves out of the situation here. So I hear you. we need something that's going to deal with the situation right now and during this time. <clears throat> no, brother. We need something that's going to deal with the situation forever. <laughs> Not right now. We're going to ease right now, but we need something that's going to deal with it forever. You know what I'm saying? So mine is forever. Mine's not just for right now. What I'm pushing for is going to be finished. There ain't going to be no more of him or it. <laughs> so I'm not talking about right now, you understand? I'm talking about my grandchild. You understand that? No, brother, that's what you don't know. I know my grandchild going to be out there. I know that. And I know we going to win. And I know I going to win. Because if my grandchild wins, I win. Because that's my people. So I'm not worried about it. Now, you may think you're not going to win. No, I don't believe that, brother. No, I'm misunderstanding. You know we're going to win? I know we're going to win. Well, then if we're going to win, let's slow it down and do it inside. Let's put it on him the way he's supposed to get it. Let's make him suffer slowly. <laughs> <laughs> let's slow it down. We have, we, have to talk about, we have to talk about practicality. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about opposed, practicality. I'm not opposed to what you're saying, brother. Right, OK. You know, I'm, I'm talking about practicality. I'm going to understand. You know? Right, I hear you. Right. I'm talking about practicality. So, uh, um, what I'm speaking of is um, we got to be able to take care of our situation now. See, like right now, we're dying. Drugs and so forth, they're railroading a lot of But we said that's going out to the community. We said that. That's well, going right. out to the community. We, we got to have something that's going to deal and educate us now. Yes, yes, we're going to do that. So that if we do return to Africa, we're going to do that. We got to have that kind of people. We're going to so do that's that. That's what I'm talking about being practical. We're going to do that. I've, I started off by telling you that theory. Without practice, it's empty. And I hope I ain't an empty nigga. I hope. I'm going to get it before we finish. All right? We still got time. Remember that there, there, there are two, there, there are many contradictions. There can be many contradictions 
within a thing itself, all right? And so what you have to do is to prioritize your contradictions. Major contradiction, minor contradiction. Okay, there is a major contradiction between Africa and European imperialism, correct? There's also that contradiction to the Arabs. But there's a minor contradiction between the Arabs and the Africans. And we want to seek to make this contradiction a non-antagonistic contradiction. You understand non-antagonistic contradiction? Uh -huh. So that's what we have to do at this point. <coughs> Hoping that by the time we have resolved this contradiction, this contradiction will have resolved itself non-antagonistically. If it has not, it will be resolved. And the just people will always win. My brother. seem to be on a cool nature in terms of uh, their nationalistic attitude, you know, whether it be Pan-Africans or what. Uh, what do you think can be done or uh, what does need to be done toward, uh, to agitate that type of uh, response that we used to have where we used to, you know, question each other's uh, validity, you know, because uh, uh, there used to be a saying, you know, uh, be cool, man, you know, uh, to be hot rather than to be cool, you know, so that at least conflict between us can bring about some answers in terms of uh, uh, justifying what we're doing, and, uh, keeping in constant uh, check, you know, self-check, you know, so we can... Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I'm sorry. Go um, you know, uh, just the attitude I'm talking about, uh, overall attitude of black people uh, and the effect of the white media and things like that to suppress our, uh, our inward nature or, or us coming together. Okay, I'm saying, what uh, do you feel needs to be done uh -huh. to re-agitate, oh, you know, the kind You're of You're asking response. the same question the brother was asking. I'm gonna uh -huh. come to it. I'm timing myself. I'm gonna come to it. I want to get all. I want to get all all the principles out of the way. So once we get the principles out of the way and we go to the tactics, there can be no argument on principle, only on tactics related to agreed upon principles. That makes the discussion more logical. Yes, my brother. You must speak. $76,000 house as long as he doesn't exploit it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the problem is, is that it doesn't seem like that there's enough natural resources for everyone to have a $70,000 house. So somewhere along the line, one has to impose a limit on the amount of natural resources that we're going to have on a $70,000 house. I mean, the amount of money we're going to spend on a house. How are you going to solve this in the contradictions of Socialism. It's very easy. Because you're not talking about a socialist society, you're talking about America, which is a capitalist society, first and foremost. Okay? Let's say a man works and earns one hundred thousand dollars. Okay? A year. Alright? Another man works and makes fifty thousand dollars a year. Another man two thousand dollars a year. Most of the people making two thousand. Alright? Alright? This man makes a hundred thousand in the work he's doing. He's not exploiting these people. Oh, is it possible? Yeah. It's not, what are you saying? It's not possible to exploit? <laughs> it seems to me that in order for the man to make $100,000, uh -huh. that it, he, has he has to be exploited? To, I thought that's what you were going to say. All right. No, 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 no. I hear you. Some people have to make $2,000. Right. I hear you. 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 All right, look. Let's take book writing, all right? Let's take book writing, all right? Brother writes a book. In order to get the book published, he has to go to a publishing firm, right? Publishing. He has to sell his labor to the publishing firm. You understand? The publishing firm is going to make the profit, not really him. They will give him some money, you understand? If his book, for example, makes $700,000, they're going to give him 100000 You understand? He's still being exploited because he has to sell his labor to the publishing house. Correct? All right? Has he exploited anybody when he gets his, seven, his 100000 He is caught up in an exploitative system. Yes. My, my, my problem with that is this. What kind of price is that? Huh? He ain't got no control over it. Matter of fact, he ain't got, he begging, he's publishing, he's working, he's publishing it. 
That man gonna tell him, I'm gonna give you this much percentage. See? But that the man, the father, he ain't doing nothing. It's the brother who wrote the book. He the one who did the work. He's being exploited. But the level of production, the level of returns for his work is much higher than the level of returns for somebody else inside the same system. You understand what I'm saying? But he's being exploited. He ain't exploiting nobody. He can't even sell the book for the price he wants to sell it for. Okay, the problem with that is that I think the principle is that once I get beyond my basic need, mm -hmm. food, clothes, and shelter, then I must use whatever money I've got in order to uh, uh, yes, to do what you want with it. No, For example, no, implement the whole notion that that to bring up a dude for a guy two thousand dollars. I hear you. 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 So how are you gonna give it to the two thousand? What are you gonna do? Go out and give everybody a dollar? Well, wait a minute now. Give me credit for coming up with some kind of alternative other than. I'm coming up with the others. I'm coming up with the others. All right, what? I'm asking you. The brothers are unorganized. Okay. Right. Now what you gonna do? With Uh -huh. and there must be some sort of collective utilization. There's no disagreement. There's no disagreement. I'm talking about in a capitalist society. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, and in a socialist society, this amount would not be possible in a socialist society. But whatever amount, for example, maybe the brother couldn't get 700,000, but his production, while you're moving towards socialism, may yield high returns. So he gets X number of dollars, all right? So he can do with that X number of dollars that he wants. Maybe he likes a car, maybe he likes a house, maybe he likes pigs, you know, maybe he likes clothes. So instead of, we might have a bad house but clean clothes. Somebody might have a good house and not such clean clothes because people balance out according to their taste what they want to do with the extra cash they have. Okay, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to say it once. Right. My feelings are that one principle of ideology of socialism mm -hmm. would not allow him to go beyond his, his basic needs. Correct. He would, he would Correct. Be Correct. In a socialist society. No, no. Not, no matter where you are. No matter where you are. Even in the contradictions of a capitalist society. Even if it may benefit you to have a seventy thousand dollar house, can you say it will not benefit you? I, I just not not you at the be. expense of having black people hungry. Not at the expense of black, black people out of houses. Question, okay. But that's not you're not making black people hungry. That's politics. How are you making them hungry? That's a politicalization of the full of non exploitative money can only be at the expense of some people. But how are you going to give it back? What's the structure? What's the structure? What's the structure, man? I can think of millennial type structures. Correct. Whereby we can have a more equitable utilization of the resources in which I have based upon my unique skills. Correct. Correct. And I can my think. My ability to speak, my ability to write, my ability to run, my ability to play ball, whatever. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. The question of never. Of entering a seven thousand dollar home would never get to that. Okay. Maybe you never get, maybe you never get that high amount of money. But brother yeah. Stokely, even as a tactic, brother uh -huh. Stokely called Michael should not be living in a seventy thousand dollar home. But why not? Talking to the masses. It won't be But no, 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 no. We want principle. I don't want tactics. I want principle. I want principle. What's the principle? Throw it at me. I don't have a seventy thousand dollar house now, but I want throw it at me. I want to discuss it. Let's just talk about the cutoff. I think there has to be a cutoff point if we're going to start talking about uh, dealing with socialism principles right. from us in the community. Right. Now, uh, it would be it would be untactful to do that. Plus, the main no, 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 no. Is that a question? No, tactical. We're talking about the money. If I'm collecting the money from, see, if I come in, I'm collecting your money, dig it, and I'm taking your money that I'm collecting because I say I'm working for you no, and buy a seventy thousand dollar house, and I ought to be off. You gave an example. Of yes, that's not the question. We're talking about m my own money. Right. You right. Gave the book here. Right. Exactly. Now, for instance, this whole business of the seven hundred thousand dollars right. that was made and dealing with books, right. people continue to do what the capitalists suggest. Right. The cutoff point I said is, is where the man is. The man Correct. controls the mode of production. Now, when he throws out these crumbs, if somebody does not react on that kind of behavior, then the system doesn't stop. All you're doing is supporting the system. But how many you people? Are, in, how wait many a minute. People in here would react on that? Uh, no, 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 no. no. That's uh, uh, take that $100,000 and do with it. But we're saying that if, if a brother does, if a brother is talking no. about serious 
Yeah. No. You have to do lean correct. You're absolutely incorrect because the principle is what counts. I could tell you why if I had a hundred thousand, no, no brother, let me finish. I can tell you and you could agree that if I had a hundred thousand dollars, it may be better for me to buy a seventy thousand dollar house than to give the money to any other organization because maybe I can set up an organization in my house. That's right. My own organization. No, no. What? Is it, it, why not? Why not? It's not, it's a question as long as you know that when I get the money, I'm using it for my people. That's all. And no matter what I do with it, you're going to know I'm using it for my people, then right on. Because if you have the basic objective, that's all that counts. Look here, brother. No, it's not a rationale. I send you in the White House as a butler to bow for Nixon. If we have the same objective, blow up the White House. So then if you have no problem with it, you can't have no problem with the man getting a $70,000 house. If you live in a $70,000 house, some black people got to live in a mud hut. And I'm saying that's wrong. For me to consciously make all right. Let me tell you, do you agree with me the Breakfast Nation of the Race says that in revolution there's no sentimentality? Do you agree with me the President Secretary of the Race says that in revolution there's no sentimentality? You got no problem. Then if you want to tell me that you can't do this because people are going to be suffering, that's a bad excuse, brother. What's the scientific result? Because our people are suffering. Our people are suffering. What are the scientific results? So you're thinking about the house as a living house, just to live in at $70,000. I'm thinking about an organization, man. But if the organization is organizing the party, the people. Yes, my brother. I understand what you're talking about. You're talking about basic needs of subsistence. But you cannot decide what the basic needs of subsistence unless you're deciding what the organization is doing. For example, President Sakuture needs about five cars. He needs five cars. Because if he has a guest who comes to visit the country, that guest must be able to go in a car. The cars are paid for by the government, of course. But he has five cars at his disposal. You understand? He has a big house. He lives in a little room in the house, but it's a big house. When government guests comes, he must be able to put them somewhere. Now, we're a poor country. You understand what I'm talking about? We're poor. But we certainly want when our guest comes to give them something at least that's comfortable. And that's I right. tell you that it, as, as clearly we can go to our African culture and get examples. I can tell you that Hoshinin refused to live beyond the means of the average person. I understand and he, that. And he, he, I, even, I even was there. I saw the place. Right. Okay. So I'm suggesting to you that 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 a uh, person who comes at your guest ought to be willing to live at your level of living. But when I went to Vietnam, they didn't put me at their level. They didn't put me at their level. If you have a, if you have a guest, you get out the bed and sleep on the floor and give the guest a bed, that's the African hospitality, brother, come on. You're talking proletarian chauvinism. Well, what do you mean I'm talking about? I mean that you, you're glorifying poverty. No, I'm not. We don't want to glorify poverty. My trust. Yes. Would not allow me to accumulate wealth beyond a certain level. Yes. Excuse me. To me, there's a problem here over the use of this money and what it's used That's what we're talking about. That's the basic thing. That's precisely what I'm talking about. about someone who moves into a house just to live. I understand that. That's what I'm now saying. you didn't clarify earlier. It's just now coming out that you're talking about. No, but still, I understand that though. But the principle is the thing. The principle. It's the principle. The principle, whether or not, because see, a whole lot of brothers might be doing funny things, you understand? That right. affairs funny to us. But if we know the brother has the same objective, we're going to at least wait and watch and see before we jump. Right. And I'm trying to tell you that your principles would not allow you to move. That means, according to you. Right? According to you. According to you. Not scientific logic. You can't say that. Maybe a $70,000 house may offer the best possible protection. Did you think about that? I'm suggesting to you that the means of deciding must be done in terms of what the what the uses of that natural resources to the masses. But it's mine. It's mine. I decide if I want to use it to the people or not. The people can't deny me the right to decide. I willingly decide to give it to the people. But as long as I have not stolen it from the people, the people cannot demand that I give it to them. I can only huh? You can steal from the people, brother. You can steal from the people. Remember, I said something about the cutoff point. I hear you. All right. The modes of production is in the, in the hands of the 
I hear you. I hear you. Now, all right, other things coming down, you know, a lot of people are going to make a lot of money. I hear you. Now, for a brother to say that this is mine, I have not exploited anybody. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. That's a poor tactic, brother. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Bring him back. Bring him back. In our own unique way, have to contribute to the ongoing society. Correct. And that we shouldn't be putting up value judgments on correct. one person getting more money than the other. Absolutely That's correct. In terms of where we're going. Absolutely now, correct. Now I'm seeing that when my principal, or myself, and yes. how I relate to the yes. to my masses, yes. will, will allow me to make that kind of conclusions where I would not okay. indulge in those activities that move me beyond that. All right. All right. But then again, it's not principle for you, it's tactic. It's a tactic. It's a tactic, it's not a principle. Because on your principle, you have a tactical cutoff point. Your tactical cutoff point may be you will not buy a house for more than $40,000. You understand? That's your tactical point. That's your tactical point. It's because you taught me that. You said no, 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 no. I didn't teach you that. All I taught you is that whatever you have, you should use for the people. That's all I taught you. I do not have economic gain. At the expense of, the ex by exploiting the people. Right. So we've already gone over. This money has not been exploited from the people because we're all caught up in a capitalist system. We have gone over that. So now the question is, what I have, number one, do I use it for the people? Or number two, do I use it against the people? I may have it and not use it for the people or not use it against the people. There ain't no problem with that. Ain't no problem with that. I'm talking about realistically, because I want to use it for the people. So the principle is whether or not you use it for the people. That's the real principle. So then you can't judge the amount. If he has a $70,000 house, then he should be doing a whole lot for the people with that $70,000 house. Thank you. That's how you decide. That's the only way you decide. Correct? No. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but go on. No. Well, we can discuss it. Uh, I wonder if you could bring it to another level in terms of, let's just say, in the 60s, that all the strive, the strives were to get people into various uh, positions. Now, do you count that person as being um, an opportunist or an egotist if they're in a position and they're helping other black people uh, improve, uh, improve their condition? What, what do you uh, say about those people? Are they opportunists? If, if, let's just say, you uh, got the position of Roy Chalk, uh, I'm not could you... here. I came to be fair. I came Brother, we're discussing. Come on. Discussing. Okay, well, let's put it this way. I, I feel that man, whatever I try to teach others, man, I must start with self. And I tell myself that I've got a certain limit that I think that I need in terms of subsistence. All of the rest of my money, I feel that in order for me yes. to be true to myself you. and the people around me, I, I must give it up. Now look, I'm going to show you how much, I'm going to show you how much better. And I, I practice that. I hear you. I hear you. And I hear you. And it goes check receipts out. I hear you. 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 Now you're saying that you have a limit for yourself. Right. And I'm saying that my limit is the people. Understand me carefully. So for me, there ain't no limit. Because anything I get is going for the people. Right. That means it's not. No, 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 no. That means, brother. That means that if I have a forty thousand dollar house, that forty thousand dollar house is going to be used as much as possible. As much as forty thousand dollars can be used for my people. If I have a one room shack, as much as possible, that one room shack is going to be used for the people. If I have a five hundred thousand dollar house. As much as possible, that five hundred thousand dollar house is going to be used for the people. I understand that. You are not addressing yourself to my question. I am. No, I, I am. am. Okay, Rick, go ahead. Oh, uh, matter of fact, once we bought uh, about seventy-five thousand dollar bills, we sure did. We organized a movement out of it. We sure did. We sure did. We sure did. Don't even know who had this. The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee bought a building in Atlanta, Georgia. For about two hundred thousand dollars, and we didn't even know when when we were getting ready to buy it. Some people were talking about that bourgeois. We don't need that. And someone said, "Buy the building. We need everything we can for our people. Buy it." We bought a building on Atlanta, and from that building, we turned this country upside down. And today, I don't even know who owned the building. Don't nobody even care about it. We walked away from it. We walked away from it, and walking up to a bigger building. You understand? This time, we don't want to know who's around 200,000 buildings. We want a building because we're going to turn the country upside down. 
So again, it's, it's not the question of what you got, man. You see me as an individual. I see me as part of the people. Whatever I got is for them. My life is for the people. If my life is for the people, my house has got to be for the people. You can't compare your house, your life to your house. Yeah, I'm talking principles. But don't talk tactics, talk principles. Let me throw this at you. You can decide what it is. All right, now, for instance, if we can rationalize within our minds that uh, the sky is a limit as long as we're not exploiting. Correct. What is going to happen is there's going to be a lot of energy used to do that. Uh, that is to acquire the kinds of things, the material things in the society uh, that we think is a, is a great thing. Now, lots of energy is going to be used there. And we're going to stop forgetting. Pretty soon we're going to be co op to a large extent. So I think yes. as a tactical move, we're going to have to be very careful about the kinds of materialism we emerge ourselves in. Okay, my sister. As, as, a, as a tactical I hear you. Move. My sister. Louder, please. I recognize that in order for $700,000 to be in the hands of one person, some people is without. We and logically, that. that is an error We understand of that. It's an error of me, it's capitalism. capitalism. No, no, I'm saying that's, now, what now, that's what I'm suggesting. Now, somehow that I know. But let me show you very tactically. Error. Let me show you tactically how it can work. Do you know if you have a $70,000 house, you pay less taxes? <laughs> Do you know that? You pay less taxes. So if I make $100,000, I have a $70,000 house, I'm paying less taxes. But now you tell me, no, brother, you get your $40,000, so I'll go buy me a $40,000 house. I'm going to listen to you now. And you say, now the rest of it, you give to the people. No, the rest of it going to the government. A whole lot of it going to the government. A whole lot of it going to the government. A whole lot of it going to the government. Because yeah. ain't no tax-free black organizations, is there? Yeah. So all of it going to the government. And if I give you a dollar over my 50000 for every dollar I give you, I got to get the white man. So I can give you 20000 give him 20000 I'll buy a $70,000 house, give him 10000 taxes. You and I don't need to get into a personal dialogue on how to We must, system. because now, it's a question of principle. If you want to, I can say, hey, listen, set up a dummy. Uh, Correct. Uh, co uh, Corporation. Non Correct. Correct. And put, put the money in there. Right. And pay yourself. yourself from it. Right, right. I hear right. you. So I don't think you and I need to get I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. We're but talking about once I put up the dummy, once I put up the dummy, who does it belong to? The dummy corporation. Who's gonna control it? Who's gonna be who's gonna control it? Thank you. Right. So the house is Stokely. No, we're talking about how you <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because with the dummy corporation, since Stokely controls it, he's going to decide, okay, we can give scholarships to some brothers right. from the continent. We can give some scholarships here. We can do that. Boom, boom, boom. Stokely's deciding that, you understand? But Stokely might decide, for him, if I get a house for $70,000, I'm an office in here, boom, 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 boom. it's much better. I just decide that tactically. See, it's a principle. And it must operate on a principle as long as the person has the same objective. And the only way you can see is when his theory does not conform to his practice. 
You cannot assume that because he's getting a seventy thousand dollar house that his theory now stops conforming to his practice. As a matter of fact, with that material, he might be able to impel his theory with his practice. We just have to watch the brother. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You can't a priori judge because you cannot put limits. You just cannot. I have a brother. I think uh, what I consider uh, someone. Uh, She has a studio in her house. Uh, 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 right. I mean, you just can't do that. Uh, 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 that. That the purposes that she used her house with that studio in for it is directly concerned uh, with, with, with the cultural life of black people. And also beating the taxes, because she got a company in there, man. And you can't just see. No, brother, because what I'm saying is that you cannot, just because a person has a new car, you can't say the nigga got a new car. No, you have no. to. What is he doing with the new car? It's not the crab. That's a beautiful house. What's he doing? That's a beautiful example. Right. right. Now we're saying that a functional definition of a car is a movie from point A to point B. Correct. Correct. Now, 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 Correct. No, because I know my brother's going to be out there sweeping that thing tonight. But if you walk, look here. While he's sweeping it, while he's sweeping it, I'm walking in to rip off the money and bring it back to him. It's, it's, What's that rationale again? A rationale is very simple, my brother. Because what you keep doing is you're seeing certain types of work. If the brother's sweeping, he's sweeping, he's sweeping. And I'm up here, yeah, and I'm up here fine, looking good. I must be doing something wrong. But maybe to look good, I can do something that he can't while he's sweeping. No, I, 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 I took it for granted that you were going to leave a suitcase there and walk out. And the, the next day, we don't have no bank. And I'm suggesting to you, we don't need a hall for that kind of activity. But even if you do, you might need it. Because you can't decide. How can you decide? The objectives to decide. And you, you're too sentimental. Look, brother, in a revolution, in a revolution, a lot of people got to die. You understand that? That's how cold it is. It's real cold. It's ice cold. You understand? Some people got to die. So now. If there's a building to be taken, dig it, and I'm a platoon leader. This is my platoon, you understand? And I have seven years' experience, you understand, in my platoon, and uh, that building got to be taken. And I know from my experience that uh, some of us got to die to take that building. Huh? I didn't read the book, brother, so I don't know about it. But somebody got to take that building, you understand? Some of us got to die. So I got to sit down and say, I got 12 men. I got to figure out which three got to die. And I can't do it on sentimentality. I can only do it on clear scientific analysis. This one don't have that much experience. Let him go. This one doesn't have that much experience. Let him go. This one, even if it's my brother, my sister, or my mother, that's how it is. You three go. The rest of you take it. I have no problem as long as you start with self. You say, now, if can I make the decision to die by going in that building? And once you do that, you didn't do that, Stoker. And I got concerned about that. Because you should have said, one of them people that's going to die is me, and I'm going to be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, uh, now, until you make that decision. That's Look, man, that decision been made when I got out there and hollered black power, man. Before that, when I was working in SNCC. And that decision been made. That decision, bit, that's the best example you had, brother. I walked out of Howard University. I could have gone to a, any grad school in this country, make any money I wanted. I want to work at SNCC. $19 a week and all the bullets I can catch from white folk and jails. Did nobody, did nobody come and say, oh, he only making $19 a week. Did nobody, did nobody question it? It's again, see, what you see is the material and not the man. When I was making 19, didn't nobody say nothing. The white man didn't say nothing. He didn't say a word. But then he's making, you got a $70,000 house. Everybody say, oh man, the nigga jive. The nigga jive, you understand? He jive. But he was making $19. I don't got no $70,000 house, but if ever the need comes for me to get one for my people, go I get, get it. it. 
I won't even think twice about it. I get it quick, fast, in a hurry. And all I ask you to do is to just check me out and see if I'm still working for the people with it. Doing more things all the time. That's all. That's all. Getting back to the brother's point about the person who makes the decision, decisions that someone's going to have to die, or you're saying the person who's planning all these strategies should be the first one uh, up there and take his own life. Would you advocate, let's give the example in Guinea, when, when the um, Portuguese and their mercenaries invaded Guinea, would you advocate the Secretary had taken such a position that he had to be the first one to die? When in fact he was one of the most, in terms of his thinking, he was the one that we most needed to save to direct the struggle. Now he wasn't afraid. I mean, he, you know, he exposed himself to great physical danger. But for him to for him to deliberately take the position that I got to be the first one to die, and for the troops to allow him to do that, you remove the most important person. You remove the person that can direct the struggle. Sister, I have known no man in. Have removed himself from this earth and the world did stop. But look at brother, I tell you what, I tell you what, okay, okay, wait, wait, hold it, I understand, but look at I tell you what, if you, if you, me, and Sekou Toure were standing in a room, now hear me well, and somebody shot a bullet at you, I wouldn't jump in front of that bullet, but if they shot in front of Sekou Toure, I'd jump. That's right, I understand, I understand, but mine is scientific, mine is scientific, clear science. Me and how I, like this. I do not personal. That's very personal, not political. Very sentimental. I told you that. Well, I mean. It says that um, when you talk about uh, like ownership of property, private property, the fact that you're talking about. Um, Owning, I mean, like a very big uh, kind of thing within a, an equitable society is in the first place impossible. But then, I mean, I think the brother had a problem by understanding that in a society, even in a socialist society, that society is not absolutely just at that point. Because socialism is the transitional stage to a higher equitable kind of society. For example, in Ghana, one woman had a car that cost so many thousands of dollars, so many thousands. This car was bulletproof. I mean, I didn't need that car at that time because my, I mean, I, mean, I, I didn't need at the kind of security. But he needed that kind of security. Then, I mean, him buying that kind of car was naturally, I mean, beyond the, I mean, I mean, he, 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 according to the brother's definition, he was beyond the means of the people. But of course, that was the people's property because it was functional in terms of security. So, I mean, I mean, maybe the brother is I mean, making a mistake by thinking that, I mean, you're saying that anybody has the right just to go and own a $7,000 house to a car. But the, the point he has to understand is just that. It's so far, it's so far as that car is functional towards the general good of the people. I'm not advocating the fact that I mean, I mean, uh, somebody can just jump and just go and buy any kind of car, any, any, any kind, of, kind of house. I'm talking, about, I'm talking particularly in, a, in an organized society. Like, for example, in Guinea, the house even to the living, even though it's humble, it's not comparable to the, I mean, how the forest man lives in. Because it's impossible for, I mean, secretary to obtain this kind of security <laughs> that he needs in terms of the enemies. And, I mean, the, in, in relation to the, the, the security, I mean, the individual in the village needs. For example, in China, Chairman Mao's, the, the, the house down with Chairman Mao's nation is, is about maybe 100 times or more expensive than the house the ordinary person in China nation. But that's the difference. The, the villager owns the house as much as Chairman Mao owns the house. Because it's a whole, I mean, property kind of thing. And there are different parts of, of, of I mean, to, the, to, the, to the whole government. Different parts play different functions. all moving towards the same direction. But this doesn't mean that, I mean, and if I get it right, you are saying that, I mean, anybody can just jump and buy a 7,000 house and whatever you want to do with it. I think the brother has, big, big, big misconception I think the brother has. But it's a question of how functional, in terms of general framework, general plans, I mean, social, I mean, the re the revolution, how does that fit in? And I, I mean, I see increasing, for example, uh, in the castle in Ghana, in the Thomas Castle, or the Polymer Octopus Castle, or anything, he lived in the castle, and the castle was really expensive. Because it had to, I mean, have I mean, pinnacles, some bombs here, and everything for security. So I mean, uh, to say that I mean, why we're talking about revolution simply because we live in the house, I think would be like uh, trying to negate the, the, the reality of the, of, the, of the struggle. Because I mean, to go into a revolution doesn't mean that everybody should just go and live like peasants. You can have a peasant spirit. You can, you, 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 you can live a peasant life. 
but they the rule. You have spies, for example. You have, uh, I mean, uh, people who could be ambassadors. And if you have an ambassador in China, you don't necessarily have an ambassador in China to live in China as a person who has a living. So, I mean, I think that we just have to, I mean, understand the question of, I mean, relativity to the whole, I mean, I mean, to the whole structure. And not a question of private ownership, private property. Mm -hmm. I'd like to also uh, make a point on your statement, and I'll use an example as far as being right here is concerned. We have problems with medical centers. We have problems with daycare centers. And all the pro we even have problems with housing. If I had a $70,000 home, and I went downtown, and I met a sister and her two kids, and she didn't have a place to stay, but her house had just burned down. Black people are subject to all kinds of humiliation because they have to stay in hotels in New York and look like dogs. There are a lot of black people with $70,000 homes, and even more, that could put these people up and they could learn and work together and have a good time. There are a lot of things that we can do. You could use my house as an office. You could use my master bedroom. You see, you could use my second bathroom to have brothers to come in off the street and take a bath and clean up. No, I think there's so many things. No, I think it's just practical. Once the person has this thing at his disposal, and he uses it for his that's people. all. Then we have to see. That's all. And all I'm saying is that you shouldn't try to limit. Just let the brother. Let's see what he's gonna do with it. That's all I'm saying. Right. But if you agree, if you agree with, but if you agree with the principle, how can you? What, what's your tactical yeah, problem? Because it's possible here that tactics can help, can, can, can make the principle. Not if your principle is that. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does with it. You agree with that principle? Do you agree with that principle? No, let me, let me just no but do you agree with the principle? If you say, let's see what he's gonna do with it. Do you agree with that principle? I have problems. Okay, then let's do it. What about the principle? Why do you have problems with it? The system, the system that we're trying to, to, uh, to bring, uh, that we're trying to overthrow, mm -hmm. is what gives you legality to hold to owning a house at seventy thousand dollars. Okay. Not necessarily. Well, if, if someone tried to take it from you, of course you had the police. You know, this kind of shit. You know, so you are protected within the framework of the system. Okay. Do you take on that? No, I don't do that. Okay. Well, let me just go on. Let me just go on. See, uh, see our problem is with the notion of the seventy thousand dollars house because of because of tactics, mainly because of what happened to brothers when they historically what has happened to brothers that have uh, gotten caught up in the terrorism. That's the problem. No, that's the problem. We cannot. That's the problem. That's the problem. But we'll never know if the brother is bad unless we tempt him. Give him the seventy thousand dollars. Let's see what happens to him. Then if he comes, no, 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 no. We understand it. We understand it. But I can show you a whole lot who flirted with it and walked away from it. I can show you a whole lot, and I bet you I can show you. So you rather take a chance with the seventy thousand dollars? I want to prove the brother, man. I give him a hundred thousand and put him in there and watch what he does with it. Then I know what he's done with it. Then I know, okay, this brother can't do it. Right. But if a brother say he's working, look here, man. Look here. Let's say you're an organizer. Look, look, wait, hold it. Hold it. I understand that, brother. Look. Let's say you're an organizer, all right? You're organized. You're working for my organization. Dig it? You're organizing somewhere in Mississippi. You come to me and you say, hey, man, I need $20,000. You know what I'm saying? And that sounds like an awful lot of money, man. I said, what you need $20,000 for, man? I need it to build a community center. Okay? Now, if I have the twenty thousand dollars, I have two choices, man. Either to give you or not give you. You understand? But you're a good worker. You understand? And your character has been like this. You understand? We're not questioning seventy five. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. We ain't talking about that. I said your character is like this, right? I'm gonna slide you to twenty. I'm gonna slide you to twenty. Even if you mess up the twenty, it's worth it. Cause if you don't, I know what kind of man I got. And money don't ever make no difference to me. Never did. Well, never did. In other so words, then, you're saying that if any brother is in the community and he wants to do a $70,000 seventy thousand dollars, whatever he might be, right. if it's in the right. community, you let him go on. No. Right. I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him. I ain't got no right to stop him yet anyway because they ain't got no control. I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him. Because there are a whole lot of brothers out here now who've made a lot of economic benefits from the black power movement. A right. 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 whole lot of them. And ain't none of them 
kicking none back into the community. Ain't none of them even trying to organize even. Ain't none of them doing nothing but getting the money. A lot of them spouting rhetoric, but they still getting the money. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. But there are some who do and sub you. What about yourself? There are some who do and sub you. And there are some who live in the same lifestyle, but doing something quietly. You understand? And so we don't know. So we cannot assume that just that we have to wait and see what the brother is doing. You understand? With all that, man, look here. Once when I was in Guinea, man, we did a mission, man. And a cat was given $5,000 to travel in his pocket for a mission, man. That's all. $5,000, you understand? Cash. Cash. 5000 And everybody sat at the table and said, give him more. We said, give him more. He said, no, I can do it with five. We said, give him more. You need 10? Take it. If we had 25, we'd give it to him. Because what we wanted done had to be done. So we don't put an economic value on this. All right. That's the principle. All right. All right. The All African People's Revolutionary Party. This is uh, what some of us around the country want to start. We want to start all African people's revolutionary party. The objective is pan-Africanism, ideology is improvementism. We're not a lot of people now, I'll tell y'all, we ain't a lot. Just a few of us, just a few, small little group. We ain't got many people, we ain't got no names. Some people know us, some people don't know us. And we're gonna try and recruit. We want to build a mass party. It is only through a mass party that the people can be educated. Mass party. In capitalism, you have interest, conflict of interest. Thus, you can have two parties, or more than two parties, Democratic and Republican, or whatever you want, because it's accepted that there are conflicts. And it's okay for people to fight as long as they get a big piece of the pie. Under a socialist country, you only need one party because it represents the interests of the whole people. And the people are not in conflict with each other. That's a mass party. This party doesn't mean that it's a party that's gonna run a congressman to be a congressman. No. This party may run congressmen. It may become involved in electoral politics. It will become involved in electoral politics. But electoral politics is not its ends. It doesn't see becoming a black mayor or becoming a black congressman as something good in itself. It only sees this as a, pos as a this position as a means to its objective. The party is socialist. That it, thus, it is uncompromisingly opposed to capitalism. It sees that the utter destruction of capitalism is its mission. So it can never compromise that. That principle can never be compromised, even if you become a black congressman in this party. The party wants to organize all sectors of the African community, not only in America, but wherever the African is. Because the party is not a national party. The party is an international party, and its base is in Africa base is in Africa, not in America, nowhere else but in Africa. Its priority is Africa. Its objective is Pan-Africanism, the total unification and liberation of Mother Africa under an all-African, all-socialist government. The party is going to come up slowly, not fast. Because the party wants quantity, but more than quantity, the party wants quality. The party wants people who accept the same ideology, thus you will have people thinking the same. When Mao Zedong speaks, 900 million Chinese speak. That's the unified force that the African must have in order to destroy imperialism. That's what we'd like to start, and time is up, so we've told you a little bit about our practice. You've heard a lot about our theory. Now you should watch our practice and see how good we are in implementing our theory. All right, thank you.
We have them. We get them. We get them later. We get the people who are serious. When they come, we give it to them. Understand, yeah. The same things. So I, some people have been here for all of the seminars. I'm not sure if that's just. I wonder if it's just. Is it just my brother? Is it just? Do you think it's just for some people to come to all of them? Uh -huh. Do you think it's just my sister? You think it's just for people to come tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just? No. See, we've been having seminars. This is the third one. And some people have come to all three. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you if you think that is just. Yes. You think it's just. Does anybody think it's unjust? You think it's unjust, my brother? Why? Equal opportunity. Did you hear? Yeah. Miss my brother. I think it's just like if the people who have attended all three like spread what they have learned. If not, then it's unjust. Okay. Do you accept that, my brother? Yeah. All right. So then all those people who've been here for more than three, I'm personally going to expect them, based on my political ideology, to do more work than all the other people. Because practice theory without practice is empty. Uh -huh. <clears throat> there is a difference between a reform movement and a revolutionary movement. There's a big difference. In a reform movement, one can take the foundation of a given structure and try it by keep, while keeping the same foundation to reform, to rebuild the structure. But you keep the same foundation. You don't change the foundation. You may knock down a door here, a wall there, or whatever, but you still believe that within the same system, you can get reform because X number of needs are not being met. All right. A revolutionary movement is a movement which has decided that and as a matter of fact, his most important objective is building, not destroying. He will have to destroy while he builds. He will have to destroy while he builds. But he must not be so preoccupied with destroying that he does not build. He must be preoccupied with building. And if he's building correctly, he will be destroying. He has to destroy. There's a lot of destruction that must be done. He has to destroy. But building, building, building is what he's about. Building is what he's about. <coughs> the reform movement, as we said, he ain't about building. The reform movement, he's not about building. He's about remodeling. He's about remodeling. He's going to remodel. He's not going to rebuild. You must understand. So if you talk about revolution, you're talking about building. If you talk about building, you're talking about destroying foundations and creating new foundations. New foundations. And so you have to destroy all of this, not only materially, but also philosophically and ideologically. Otherwise, you will be remodeling. You may be remodeling. Now, when you remodel, because the cat who's building, see, he's coming out with new stuff. Right on, he's coming out with new stuff. He's going to come out with stuff like black power and black pride, you understand? Because that's what he's building. So the cat who's trying to remodel, when he sees a cat who's building talking about black power and black pride, he's going to jump over there and start yelling black power and black pride, but trying to remodel, <laughs> understand? He's not trying to build. He's going to take black power and black pride and try to bring it in the same foundation to remodel. Because black pride look good, black power look good. So he's going to try and snatch it and bring it in the same old house and remodel it. He might call it black capitalism, whatever. 
Man. Black is the black is the thing that everybody's running for, but black is the basis of the new building. It's not remodeling. It's building. So by definition, our struggle is revolutionary. It is revolutionary. We cannot remodel America. We cannot remodel it. We can only destroy it. Uh, a lot of people are talking about this revolutionary movement in America. And I spoke to a young sister here who's a freshman on Howard's campus about the movements, the activities on Howard's campus. And I asked her, was there any kind of, of a movement in reference to not going back to Africa to stay, but purchasing land in Africa, trying to gather up students in all the different fields and programs here at Howard University who can build mm -hmm. and try to set up some kind of a community or something. And the reason why I ask this is because America is so polluted. Yes, my sister, please, before we get to the tactics, let's get to the ideology. Because if we agree on principles, then we can argue about the tactics. All right. Because we don't want the people to go there unless they have the correct ideology. The whole lot of brothers got a lot of skills in this country. But their skills are being used for themselves, not for their people, because they do not have the correct ideology. They have philosophies which are characteristic of this system, the system we are about to destroy. And thus, before we even send them out, we must make sure that we are all working on the same wavelength. That some of not, are not saying black power and black pride to try and remodel America, but really, in fact, to try and build Africa. That's all. OK, all right. This country is a capitalist society. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Leader of world imperialism. Yes, it is. I am against capitalism. I'm totally opposed to capitalism. The only way that there can be world peace is with the complete destruction of capitalism. Now, I can't tell you in all the time we have what capitalism is, but I can give you some of the basic characteristics of capitalism. And we can discuss that and then move on. But I want to be sure that you and I are working from the same definitions. Not that we're agreeing, but just working from the same definitions. If we do that, then we can disagree logically. Capitalism is a system which is based on exploitation. 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 It cannot function unless it exploits. It must exploit in order to function. It must. Under the system of capitalism, capital and labor are always in conflict. Capital and labor are always in conflict. And capital and labor are always in conflict because the motivating force for the capitalist system is profit. 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 The capitalist system accepts and respects conflict of interest. inside its system. Not only do they accept conflict of interest, but they respect it. They adore it. They make it sacred. They make it sacred. They make it sacred. My spelling is bad. Individualistic. Mm -hmm. Capitalism is very individualistic. Right. These are some of the basic characteristics of capitalism. We can't, I wish we, why aren't y'all, that white man got some of these things where you don't need these cords, don't he? Doesn't he, brother? Yeah. Oh, you gotta catch up with him, surpass him. But that's all right, it's for our people, so we can do it like this, right? It's okay, we can work harder for our people. Right on. I hear you, all right. We say that the capitalist system is a system based on exploitation because in the capitalist system, capital is what counts. And capital is money, 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 money. That's capital, money, money, money. And in capitalism, a few people 
own and control the means of production. When we say the means of production, when we say the means of production, we mean anything that is produced. The, all the machinery necessary to produce something. So the means of production would be a factory where you have the machinery to produce your manufactured goods. You would find under the means of production the control of the resources necessary. And of course, the labor, because labor is very important. Without labor, your resources, your factory ain't gonna go nowhere. <laughs> it ain't gonna go nowhere. You got to have labor to put it together. In a capitalist society, only a few people, a very, very few people, own and control the means of production. Everybody else works for them. Everybody else works for them. Everybody else must sell their labor to these capitalists. Everybody else. Even those who get very big, big jobs. Very big, big jobs. They still work for the capitalists. <laughs> they still work for the capitalists. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> now, the capitalists, he give them a lot of money compared to the people down here. Make no mistake about it. But he's still working for the capitalists. You understand? And he's so stupid that he don't recognize he's working for the capitalists. He thinks he's a capitalist. <laughs> That's how stupid he is, right? Yeah. He really thinks he's a capitalist. And even if he ain't a capitalist, he thinks he can become a capitalist. You hear me? He thinks he can become a capitalist. Now, the people down here, no, ain't no chance for them to become no capitalists. But some of them think they can become capitalists. Some of them think they can become capitalists. Some of them think so because that's the only thing they've been exposed to. It's the only thing they've been exposed to. They know there are contradictions. They see the contradictions. They see the problems. They're always behind in rent. But somehow they keep feeling that they can make it. They keep feeling that they can make it. And they keep feeling that they can make it because this is prevalent. This is prevalent. You can make it as an individual. You can make it if you try. You, you can, you can. You can become a doctor, a lawyer, anything. You can become a millionaire. You can, individually. So these people believe that individually. Of course, when they try, they're always blocks. They're contradictions. They're contradictions. And as they get up, maybe they become more aware. Somebody who gets to this level finds out that what they were saying isn't true. So maybe he stops there. But somebody may never get to this level, so they believe in capitalism. They believe in it. So we must be able to examine it carefully and explain it to people why it ain't no good. Why it ain't no good. Like we say, all these people work for the capitalist because all the profits come back to the capitalist and he keeps them. He keeps them for himself. Let me give you an example. This is a shirt factory. I'm a capitalist. You're my workers. You work for me. I got a little country somewhere where I'm getting cotton from. I bring it here, I've got a factory. You take my cotton, you manufacture it, and you make it a shirt. And from that shirt, I get my money. So let's say that, for example, I buy my cotton for 50 cents. It costs me 50 cents to bring my cotton and ship it into the country. I pay you a dollar for each shirt you make. I sell the shirt for $8. It costs me $1.50. fifty. Oh, I forgot something, I'm sorry. For the upkeep of my machinery, it may cost me 50 cents, even less, because it's very cheap. I already got my machinery. All I got to do is keep it oil and grease, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe it costs me that much for upkeep. All right, so that's $2. I still sell the shirt for $8. I make $6 profit. I have done nothing. I have done nothing. Nothing. I didn't pick the cotton. I didn't help ship the cotton. I, didn't, I don't even come in my factory. I have an overseer in my factory. I give him a lot of money. I call him general manager. But all his job is to make sure that everybody else is working. That's all. That's all. Now, he may change his tactics on how to get people work. At first, he might have to hit them with a whip, you understand, to make them work. But then people start getting hip to that. So he's got to change his tactics. So maybe tell him, hey, man, you can make it like me up here if you work hard. See? He's changed tactics, <laughs> but he's doing the same thing, making you work hard for nothing for him. He's changed tactics. Change tactics, but the exploitation continues. It continues. 
There's never any progress over the question of exploitation. There's just changes. The man changes, but the exploitation continues. Because a capitalist society, by its very nature, must exploit. Must. Can. Has to. Because I'm, I'm you're working. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing, man. You're working, and I take all the money. And when you want to buy a shirt, you got to buy a shirt from me for $8. <laughs> Get to that. You got to buy a shirt from me for $8. $8, the shirt that you made. It must exploit. It has to exploit because its cornerstone is what is known as private property. And that's sacred, man. Private property is sacred. You understand? And you must understand the concept of private property, even from the history of this country, man. They took this land. They killed the red man to get this land. And it's their private property. So any way you get private property, you get it as long as you get it. But once you get it, everybody's going to respect you for getting it. That's capitalism. That's capitalism. You can get it any way you get it. But once you get it, we're going to respect you because you got it. You can kill a whole nation and take it. But once you get it, it will be respected as private property. It is an evil system. It is a barbaric system. It is a politically backward system. It is a system that breeds its very destruction. That is how backward it is. It goes so fast backward that it breeds its own destruction. Private property. Thus, private property supports the concept of individualism. This is mine. This is mine. That's what the capitalist hollers all the time. This is my factory. This is my country. I took it from the red boy. I killed him for it. It's mine. I've got it. It's mine. This is mine. Individualistic feeling. This is mine. This is mine. This is my house. This is my store. This is mine. And thus, when you have everybody trying to be my, this is mine, there's got to be conflict. There's got to be conflict. There's got to be conflict. Because everybody fighting to get, there's only so much. There's got to be conflict. Got to be conflict. Just understand capitalism, then you get to the other one, all right? Because before you destroy it, you have to understand why it must be destroyed. Do you know why it must be destroyed? Why? Finish the discussion. Well, I understand what you're saying so far. Okay, well, there's more. Because when I get through with you, I want you to understand it must be destroyed. Give me a chance. And you just talk with me. I'm not going to tell you do it because I say so, but I want you to understand why you will have to do it even if I say so or not. Because logic will make you. All right? We said that in a capitalist society, there's capital versus labor. Because there's always conflict. I'm always trying to make more money off of your labor. I'm always trying to make more money off of your labor, because you are the one who's producing. I will always try to cut costs everything possible, but always to make money off of your labor. And they are always in conflict. Always in conflict. Conflict. Constant conflict. There are strikes, picket lines, slowdown, work downs. All of these things are characteristic of a capitalist society because labor and capital are always in conflict. In order to get out of this conflict, they're very stupid, you know, they really are. In order to get out of this conflict, they create a spiral system, what is called a spiral economy system. For example, you my workers, you're getting a dollar for each shirt you make. You see I'm selling them for $8. Now you come to me and say, hey, look here, man. We want more than a dollar. We want a raise in our wages. Well, you don't tell me, because you can't see me. I'm the capitalist. You tell my general manager. And he comes and see me. He said, look here, man. The, the workers say they, gonna, they want some more money. So I said, oh, man, tell them they ain't getting no more money. So he goes back, he says, hey, man, y'all ain't getting no more money. Then you all start organizing. You all organize, you all come up with a union, you all say, give me some money or we strike. So my manager comes back, he says, hey, say, give me some money or say strike. I said, oh, man, leave them alone. Don't give them no money. Forget them. Then you all go on strike. He says, while you all go on strike, I'm losing money. All right, I'm losing money. Me, I can't lose no money because I'm in this for profit. <laughs> I can't lose nothing. Well, so we argue and argue and argue. Finally, y'all say, yeah, all right, we come back to work. You got to give us $1.50. 
All right, I'll give y'all a dollar fifty. So now it costs me two fifty to produce a shirt. Hey, but now I got to do something to recover my losses. <laughs> I got to recover, and ain't no need to recover at the same amount I last had. I might as well jack it all the way up. Right on. So I'm going to tell you, right on. Now when you go to the market, you're going to pay me $10. Right on. And it keeps going. <laughs> it's going to reach the top, and the sky is going to blow. Got to. Got to. Got to. They keep. But at the, and the, the funny thing, man, is at the same time they're going, they're making the products cheaper. So they can make more money. It costs less to make a new car today than it did in 1933, and it costs you more to buy it. And the car is a cheaper product. It's terrible, man. You just touch it, it dents. Right on, man. He's just making them, putting them out there. He wants his money. In a capitalist society, it is money which comes first and not people which comes first. That's why it is barbaric. Totally barbaric. How can, in a system, money take priority over people? Sekoutoure says that it is not money which creates man. It is man which creates money. Thus, it is only logical that man must control money. How can money control man? As Frankenstein, you make something that you can't control. Only a fool would do that. Barbaric. There is no thought of the people. And since there is no thought of the people, Communism is an unplanned society. Capitalism is an unplanned society. What did I say? Oh, no, sorry. Capitalism. I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> Capitalism is an unplanned economy. Unplanned. Very chaotic. Very chaotic. Because all they want is money. Hey, look here, man. Um, when I was in the country, uh, I was driving around New York uh, a couple, about a month ago or so. I was driving around New York. And uh, I just come back from, from Guinea, you know? And uh, we didn't have many cars there. When I got on the highway, man, I went crazy. I've never seen so many cars, man. They're just cars. They're just cars. And when we go to visit somebody, I can't find a parking space, man. I got to park about four blocks and walk back, you understand? Know Even here in DC, man, last night, I looked 15 minutes for parking space, man. I timed it. 15 minutes for one parking space in DC. There's so many cars here. And dig this. Next year, the white boy gonna sell more cars than he sold this year. <laughs> See how crazy he is? Where are you gonna put him? Who gonna suffer? The people. Bumping into each other, going nowhere, rushing to get here. He okay, he's selling you cars. <laughs> And he makes it so you got to buy cars. He sabotages the public transportation, man. You got to buy cars. And while he owns the cars, he also owns the gasoline. He also, he's jacking up the prices. Everything. Unplanned society. And when you see them building new roads, you say, hey, man, look at They're building some new roads. Things are going to be all right. But you don't know they're building new roads for the new cars that are coming. No place. Unplanned. Every aspect of it. This society pulls out the suicidal tendencies in one rather than repress them. You get on the highway and you're driving about 60 miles an hour. There are all these signs, man, and cars are coming from you from each side. And if you stop, they're blowing you. Pop, pop. Nervous running. Just want to put the foot on the gas and shoot out. Pulls out the suicidal tendencies. It's a disgusting society, man. Only barbarians could actually accept this type of society. It is a society based on greed. What I want, I get. Even if I kill for it, it's all right. That's the only ethic in this society. It is repressed to certain levels, but on a governmental level, that's how it's done. The only reason America can't get into Vietnam is because the Vietnamese won't let them. But if the Vietnamese would let them, you think they wouldn't be there? They'd be right there, because they had the power and the might to do it. The power and the might to do it. It's unplanned. We said there's always conflict of interest. They have lobbies, labor lobby, management lobby, this lobby. And they accept these lobbies, man. They accept it. Because they say, look here, man, there's a pie. There's a big pie. And whatever you can get from it, it's yours. That's what it is, man. And they accept it. 
So the labor lobby, he gonna come in, he gonna try and corrupt, cause it's not, it's not what, what counts is how much you got. How much you got? So the labor lobby, he gonna pay off all the congressmen to get this slice. Somebody else gonna pay off to get this slice, this slice. And the poor unorganized people, they ain't get nothing. They ain't get nothing. They don't get nothing. And they accept it. And they even have the people saying, yeah, man, it's OK to have some conflict. It's good. The labor going to fight management. That nonsense, man. If you're in the same society, why do you want conflict of interest? That makes no sense. What you want is togetherness so the whole country can go forward. If you're all fighting each other, can't go nowhere. Can't go nowhere. Conflict of interest. <clears throat> and this can lead to warfare. Capitalism. It ain't no good. Y'all take my word for it, but read something about it. This is not the whole structure of a capitalist system. It cannot be. It's only a few characteristics because of the time we have. Just a few. Just a few. Now, if you have any questions on capitalism, we can do that now. My brother. I can't hear you, please. Oh, oh yeah, right. Thank you. You know, maybe we can, get, we can get to that later, after socialism, because we're better with communalism. Right, thank you. Yes, my brother. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's very important, brother. That's very important. Thank you. Hey, you know, in the 30s, when the labor unions, you know, it's shown up, they, they, the white workers now, he was really feeling it, you understand? And he saw that uh, the white boy was making the capitalists, he was making a whole lot of money. So the labor unions, they said, well, we got to get together and do something about this. So they got together, you understand? But look at their thinking is so capitalistic that they didn't want revolution, they wanted reform. They got together and they said to him, give me a bigger piece of the pie. They didn't say to him, redistribute the wealth that is here amongst us, give me a bigger piece of the pie. I don't care how you get it, just give it to me. You understand? Now, this capitalist, he's not about to cut down on his profits. Not about to do that. Not about to do that. So when the man said, give me more piece of pie, he started to look all over the world. Africa, Asia, and Latin America. He just started reaching in there and bam, taking it, bringing it back, taking a whole lot, and squeezing the crumbs to the labor union. And they were licking it up. But it was off the sweat of Africa. Asia and Latin America, that the white unions are now making their money. So they weren't even left to begin with. They just wanted a piece of the pie. They wanted to remodel the system, that's all. They want to remodel. They want to put up some more rooms. And that's what they did, they remodeled. But the foundation remained intact. 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 Wasn't even scratched, wasn't even a niche on it. It didn't even shake. Because it just reached out, Africa, Asia, Latin America, brought more, had more profits, and it had more profits, and gave the labor unions that much. Now, they sit up there. They sit up there. Well, yes, sir. How, how can you explain Well, we're going to get to that because we've been having some problems on it the last other two. Yeah, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Any other questions on capitalism? Uh, now, as I told you, I don't want you now to leave the room and take my word that this is what capitalism is about. You're students. You're students. And you can read, you know. And while you're here at your university, you should at least work for your people, you know. And by working for your people, it means at least understanding clearly the political implications of life, regardless of what your major is because there are many people who graduate from schools with skills and do not understand this and go out and work for it against their people. So you have a responsibility now for yourself and for those who come after you to change that type of lifestyle. And the only way you're gonna do it is by working harder, is by working harder. Time, don't bring it. Time is neutral. Don't sit and say, over oh, time. No, time is neutral. If you sit in one place and you don't move, you'll be there time afterwards. But if you want to get from here to there within such a period of time, you've got to get up and walk. So work is what counts. 
So that means you've got to work harder. Then I ask you to at least try and read something on capitalism. Try and read something on it so that you understand it completely, thoroughly, and discuss it. And discuss it, all right? We say we want to destroy capitalism. In its place, we want socialism. Don't get hung up on the word. Let's get the concepts. Let's get the concepts. <clears throat> In socialism, there is no private property. None. None. The land is for everybody. The land is for everybody. When everybody came here, did nobody have no land, so thus the land must belong to everybody. The profits from the land is for everybody. Thus everybody works, and everybody divides the profits. There is no private property. There is no few people who own and control the means of production. The means of production is owned and controlled by everybody. 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 Thus the profits are decided on how to disperse. The disbursement of the profits are decided by everybody. By everybody. By everybody. There are no few. There are no few. Everybody owns and controls the means of production. In socialism, there are no conflicts of interest. Because everybody has the same interest, the building of the nation for the benefit of its inhabitants. The better the, build, the, better the nation is, the better life I have. The better the nation is, the better life my children have. Yes, my brother. Thank you. No smoking at all. I hear you. Where was I? Ah, the nation right. The better the nation is, the better the life of the individual and his people are. So that is to say that I cannot assume that if my nation is poor and I have a big house, I'm going to be somewhere. That makes no sense. I can never rise above my people. I can never rise above my people. <coughs> and if I have a nice big house, but my country don't have good roads, and I have a big car, it ain't going to do me no good. It ain't going to do me no good. The only way I can become better is when my nation becomes better. Thus, in socialism, one is concerned with meeting the needs of the people, not with money, not with money. It is with meeting the needs of the people. So if ever there are conflicts, these conflicts can be easily resolvable by always saying, what we want to do is meet the needs of the people. At least we have an objective, a common objective, on which we can all agree. Thus, if we have tactical problems, we can reason out and scientifically see which one will have us arrive at our desired objective quickest and more efficiently. That is all. That is all. But under capitalism, when there are conflicts of interest, there is no desired objective except I want as much as I can get and you want as much as you can get. So there's no reasoning. And since it's a sacred property, I can kill you and take it because I killed the red boy and took this, I can kill you too and take it. Kill you too and take it. No desired objective. Under socialism, the desired objective is the needs of the people. Thus it is a planned society. It must be planned. It must be planned. Everybody wants cars. Everybody wants big houses. Everybody wants this. That's true, but not everybody can have it at the same time because we don't have enough. Not everybody can have it at the same time because we don't have enough, but we got to bring it in. So some people will be having it. And the people must be so well educated that even if you don't get it, you ain't mad, but you're happy your brother got it because yours is coming soon. Can you dig it? 
That's a long way to travel, ain't it? A long way to travel. Nice, if you look, nice pair of pants, man, and you want it, want it, want it, then your brother get it, man. You gotta go say, hey, brother, man, I'm so happy you got it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And then say, hey, look here, man, I ain't worried, because uh, it's coming soon, you know. Everybody gonna have more than that. So you can have it now. And I want you to look good in it, because I helped make it for you. I want you to look good in it, because I helped made it for you. That's socialism, man. That's deep, ain't it? Yes. And the only way you can find the roots of this socialism is in communalism, the African traditional society. Hmm. That's where you find its roots. <coughs> only in a society which upheld the sacredity of man could you find such a value system. You find the value system in the traditional African society known as communalism. Socialism is communalism in an industrial society. Under communalism, you have a system which is common in an agrarian society, a society where there's just agriculture. There's no industry. No industry, just agriculture. This is an agrarian society, and you have the values of communalism. The land belongs to nobody. Everybody works. Everybody harvests together. Everybody shares together. Under socialism, you have an industrial society, a little bit more complex. And you take the same values from communalism and bring them up to socialism. Are there any questions? No questions. My sister, you understand socialism? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, my sister. Because you haven't examined it. That's why it's not coming off. Once you examine it, everybody will have a common ideology. Agreed? Yeah, I think we're examining it incorrectly when we do try to subject it to some kind of analysis. I think our whole method of analysis must be incorrect. But then that's what I want to straighten out. What, what way do you subject that to analysis so that you can see? Scientific analysis. Scientific analysis, you observe it and you dissect it. And you participate in the observation and in the dissection. But clear observation, I mean, you know, uh, President Secretary says in revolution there's no sentimentality. And most people think that means, well, if my brother or my mother or my sister do something wrong against the revolution, I shouldn't be afraid to kill them. Well, it means that. It doesn't only mean that. It means that when you're making analysis, you must remove all sentimentality. Only cold science comes on the table. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just cold science. We can do it, man, because, you know, Africans, we're a scientific people. We are, man. Look here. We build the pyramids, and he can't figure out how to do it, and he going to the moon. Been there. We're scientific people. We gave the world medicine, astronomy, astrology, physics, mathematics. We're very scientific people. We'll do it very easily. Uh, is living in a capitalist society.
society, it's more difficult to... Uh, of course. Adapt, uh, of course. Uh, it is. It, uh, like in Guinea, I'm, sh I'm sure, uh, that there's a constant <coughs> education of the people in every way where it's... Uh, Absolutely. Correctly. And so in order for us to educate, we must know that we're all working from the same principles, the same premises. So we're giving the same education. The problem is that you have one person giving one education, another person giving another education, another one, but you don't have people who have discussed and sit down and are coming up with the same, even the same principles around which you can discuss. And you don't have it. I mean, it seems that in these groups, the discussion of women discussion of the role of the women plays an important role, but they haven't even decided what their objective is. Well, how are they going to decide what the woman is, man? How are you going to decide what your mother going to do, man? Can you decide what your mother, your mother going to do what she's supposed to do? How are you going to decide that, man? How are you going to put your mother to walk behind you? That doesn't make no sense. You understand, man? One other thing, brother, I think maybe too, that whenever you have a collection like this, once it becomes a thing, it gets more And that's what we must do. Right, I agree. And I mean, it's not something that you get this lecture today and go outside of your socialist tomorrow. I understand. It's something that has to constantly go on. I understand. If I may, I think after we sit in sessions such as these, on a day to day basis, we must constantly analyze what we do for consistency. Thank you. With the idea. It is correct. It's correct. We should go over that. The basis of socialism is dialectical materialism. Which says that, it says many things, but one of the basic things we can deal with is it says that when you have in any given object, you always have negative and positive forces which are in constant contradiction. Or rather, no, no, they don't say negative and, and positive. They just say you have opposing forces. They say you have opposing forces. And they say these opposing forces are always in constant conflict with each other. Constantly in conflict, constantly in conflict until something is resolved after they fight. And that which is resolved is a new thing. And then this goes on, constant conflict, constant conflict, constant conflict. You understand? That's the basis of it. It's the correct basis. In everything, there are opposites. Because nothing is static. Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. But one thing we know about life is that change is possible. Not only possible, it is permanent. It is permanent. Malcolm X changed from a Negro pimp who would sell his women to a black revolutionary who would kill to protect them. Anybody can change. I mean, he sure enough changed. I'm not, I'm not talking about rhetoric change, like a whole lot of other people out here talking about rhetoric change because they come from prison. I'm talking about a brother who sure enough changed and became a respected leader. So everything changes. This table changes, man. It's in constant, permanent change. If we leave it here for a number of years, it will diminish because there's constant, constant, constant internal movement of these opposing forces. And that's how all changes come about, all of them. Now, I am an encrumist. That is my ideology. <coughs> I am an encrumist. And the basis of my, my philosophical idea, my, the, philo the, my, the basis of my philosophical statement is dialectical materialism. But Osagifo went a step further. He said that in all of these things, they are negative and positive. They are negative and positive. And he said that these negatives and these positive constantly wage struggle against each other. Wage struggle against each other. I am an encrumist. My job is to examine all of these entities, see the positive and the negative.
collect the positive and add it to another positive and add it to another positive until the positives knocks down the negative. Now I know I will never get rid of the negative. I cannot do that because there must be opposing forces in each thing. But I can reduce the negative to a controllable insignificance. And there's positive and negative in everything. And you can apply it always constantly to your daily life. Like, for example, uh, Superfly. I went to see Superfly. I didn't see Sweetback. I was in Africa, but I heard about it. Heard all everybody I met. Man, I mean, a brother. Man, you know what they're doing now? They're pushing. Man, what they're doing, brother? What's it about? Man, this cat did just sex and drugs and sleeping with white women. And then in the end, he beats up this cop and he's running. I said, he's running? He said, yeah. I said, does he beat him up? He said, yeah. I said, he offs him? He said, he offs him. I said, what else? He said, he's running. Uh -huh. I said, that's good. I said, that's good. Because we never, we never beat him. All the other movies, we never beat him. He always comes out on top. So for the sex and the dope, there's still a positive, very positive attribute. We beat him. So young kids looking at it knows he is not invincible. He can be beaten. Even if you got to run after you beat him. You know then I saw Superfly. Now Superfly had the same thing, less dope, less sex. But after, the, after he offs the policeman, the brother walks slowly into a hog and drives away. I said, yeah, we progressing. We ain't running no more. We driving hogs. <laughs> yes. There's positive progress. We can beat them and walk into a hog and drive away. There's progress. <laughs> and it is very positive. It is a very positive aspect. Because all the talk going around is that nobody can beat the man and get away. If you're revolutionary and you're still alive, now he ain't revolutionary because he's beating the man and ma making it. You're not supposed to do that. If you're bad, you got to be in jail. If you ain't in jail, you ain't bad. If you ain't dead, you ain't bad. That's how negative the thinking is. So with sex and dope, we get over that we can beat him. He ain't invincible and keep getting up. We know dope is going out of our community anyway. We know that. It's going. People going to push it out. That ain't no problem. We know that. If you study carefully and understand what's going on, through a scientific analysis, you will know dope is going out to the community. Even historically, you'll know it. The white boy gave the Chinese opium. Opium, man. Opium. Opium. And look here. They took it, grew strong on it, and gave it back to him, and they whooping him in Vietnam. <laughs> now, what do you think? We who are Africans, we who are so strong, dope? Man, we're going to give him that dope in no time at all. Take it. And when he come with it, we look at him and laugh. We'll be selling it to him. Historically. The Chinese did it. You think we can do it? What do you think, brother? Right hmm? Right I said, what you think? Oh, I, said, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. You think we can do it? Uh huh. What do you think, sister? I think so. I know so. I know so. So since I know that, I ain't worried about that. But I'm pushing the positive. Yeah, man, he beat up the white man. Tell him I'm in. So we can beat them. We can beat them. I basically got the same way about Superfly as you do. But then it's calling my attention all the things that's in between. Right. Like uh, the children, the kids that are Correct. getting hung up there and not ready to accept I understand that. I understand that. But Superfly is a reality. Superfly is a reality. We're not strong enough to control our media yet. We're getting there, but we're not strong enough. So Superfly is a reality. <coughs> now, there are two ways we can deal with the reality. A couple of us can go and say, all right, we don't want this movie in here, and pull out guns. You, know you can do that. Of course, I can get you get enough, show enough Bogard brothers ready to go do that. You, know you can do it. But that's not the proper way. And that's not the proper way for many reasons, because you have already assumed a priority that this is not good for the people. And you can't make that assumption. The people got to make it themselves or let them see it. But while they're seeing it, your job is to push the contradictions for them, help them clarify it, show it to them. Then once they see it, then we'll see if they come home. Then if they, if they follow this line, then we know this is the line our people want. We can never assume a priority that this is no good for the people. Give them the chance. Let them see it. Let them see it. Because it's a reality. We can't stop it now. But I'm willing to bet you that uh, Superfly and all those things are going to be running out pretty soon. They're going to be running out pretty soon. Of course, people are talking about them very negatively. 
The most vocal segment of the community is negative. The most vocal segment, not the majority of the community. You understand what I'm saying? Not the majority, but the most vocal. The most vocal. That is good? <coughs> well, well, whose airways is it? Yeah, so this is. <laughs> Who's airways is it, bro? What are you supposed to do? I hear you. I agree with you. I said, uh, 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 I'm saying, uh, 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 do you agree that he should say that vocally? No, I don't agree that he should. I don't agree. I certainly don't. I certainly don't. But what I'm saying is that there is a reality. There is the, the, the picture. And since people are going to see it, instead of saying it's all negative, say, well, there's one positive thing about the flick, man. You can beat Whitey and walk away, and Whitey gonna pull the flick off the movie himself. He gonna, he gonna pull it out. He gonna pull it out. He gonna pull Superfly out when you say, yeah, I think there's something positive about it. The fact is that he beat the white man. He beat the white cop who was putting dope in the black community and walked away and drove away in his hog. Yeah. Doesn't the fact that uh, this brother is saying that the, the flick is cool when the majority of the community is saying it's bad heighten the contradictions? Of course. Eliminate yes. Of course, of course, of course, of course. And if you know that you're supposed to collect the positive and you know the positive is going to defeat the negative anyway, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You just keep getting up because it's going to be collected. It's going to be collected. The work that Marcus Garvey did ain't left, uh, ain't left. we're going to collect it. It's going to be collected. The work that Malcolm did, it's going to be collected. It's got to be collected. Understand? They were just throwing seeds. Denmark Fancy, we're going to collect it. It's going to be collected. Do you feel the black people in this country are uh, moving toward a positive goal as uh, during this period of time after the period in the 60s? Yes, I think, we're, I think that we're moving very, very fast. But I think that people are not analyzing it. That's all. Very funny, you know. But <laughs> my people are very funny people. Look here, man. When I was chairman of Snake, I was always on TV, you know? Man, you always on TV. You ain't doing nothing. You always on TV. You ain't doing nothing. All right, man, on, brother, I got to do some work here. When I get through with this, I'm going to do some real work, all right? But let me run for a while. And when I get finished, I go away. Hey, man, you ain't doing nothing. I don't see you on TV. Hey. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of us do have the TV complex, whether we want to admit it or not. If we don't see it on TV, nothing being done. And since he knows that, all he shows on TV is division. Can you dig him? <laughs> That's all he shows, man. He broadcasts televisions into your house division. And since you're used to television and television prone, when you time you see it, oh man, ain't nothing happening. Oh man, there's been a whole lot happening. He can't even televise what's been happening. The desire for unity in our community, not only on a national basis, but on an international basis, is more intense this year than it was last year, and will be more intense next year than it is this year. That's a fact. The desire for unity among the masses of our people is more intense. Is more intense. Of course, the structures are factionalized. They're divided. But the desire among the masses for unity is more intense. No one can deny that. No one can deny that. Not only on a national basis, but on an international basis. Africa, the Caribbean, South America, into America. 
The desire is more intense. Is that a whole lot of work, brother, since the 60s? That's a whole lot. Speaking of, I've, I've uh, checked uh, in personal incidents, uh, a lot of people who are sort of post revolutionary who seem to be in a revolutionary state in right. the 60s uh, started leaving that state, not uh, positive or the like. That's good, my brother. Now, the people get political consciousness by how? By heightening the contradictions. Have these people heightened the contradictions? Thus, the people have benefited. They have learned. Thus, today, it's going to take a slick opportunist to fool the people, because so many have tried. So many have tried. And the people really loved them, man. As soon as they came up, they ran to it. Whichever one it was, man, they were running to it, because they really wanted something. You know what I'm and even today, it's much harder, man. They don't even know how to come out the corner, because the people hip to them. They have educated the people. Everything the white boy tried to do to divide us has, in fact, worked against us and unified us. Hey, man, please, I don't want to do this one on TV. Just this little part. You have to cut it. I'm sorry. All right? I don't want this public, OK? After you can come back to it. Let's analyze among ourselves. Among well, you can just cut it off. I take your word you cut it off. I know you won't jive me.